cycles have passed. The tenth will never be. A great machine has cut the gods from the skies. Now, the energy of chaos is removed from the world of Lacrin. Magic has ceased to exist. A changed world, a final cycle. There is one final journey to embark upon. A decisive duty filled. A mortal god. A few heroes. A last quest. Hello everybody. Welcome to the beginning of the stream. I didn't even warn you if we were cold opening, we're not. Um, <laughs> you, were, gonna... you were like, we're coming in, and I'm like, am I supposed to be covered? I guess uh, not. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to say hi. Um, hi. Hello. Hi. Because, uh, because I want to keep talking about dogs and cats. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were just talking. We just had an in-depth conversation. Pocket was saying she absolutely hates cats, and I don't know why she would say that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not... It's not what she was saying. Yeah, actually. taking pocket like a full year to deal with my shit, and now I. <laughs> she just puts her fucking head down like to pick left. up her cat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that fluff ball. That's a nice dog. Fluffy baby. Cute. <laughs> he does. He does act very dog-like. <laughs> oh, he's so chill. He is. A fluff. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. There will be a Such point a during this show where my dog goes ape shit. Because we're gonna have a delivery soon, and he's gonna go crazy. Oh, you didn't get it yet? No. Nope. Oh. It was supposed to be here eleven minutes ago, and it's. All not. right. Well, let's stall. You know. Um. <laughs> then, it's fine. It, we'll just. There's just a dog either on the ship or in the entire city of Bologna. There's a dog somewhere going crazy in yeah, the background. Going nuts. A little demonic floof. Um. Look at out there. Cutie. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. It's us, here on Dying Order. This is episode 53, I think, which is a record. Um, every week we set a new record, by the way, for the longest running series. Mm -hmm. I think I have the record for the longest episode of a show, and the longest running series. Big, yeah. big Zags. No, I... How long was the longest oh, okay, episode? Okay, yeah, Big Zags. Big mm. Zags counts, but we did a five hour of ZBO, didn't we? Or it was ZBO or one of the other ones. One of them was really, I think... Is it the last one of CBO? I think so. Yeah, it's the finale. It's that Wacko really just sometimes long. go over on. Yeah, it was really <laughs> long. Um, um, I will hold the record. And that's all yeah. I'm doing this for. That's why this yeah. won't end. Yeah. It'll just give me more and more bullshit to happen every week. Um, there he goes. Can you hear him? Who's here? I don't know if you can hear him. Oh, yeah. At least there our delivery is. has we arrived. Long enough. In the background going crazy. And that's going to be the next 20 back. minutes. Yeah of the show <laughs> i'm just gonna turn my gain up you can listen to embarking i am selling a dog one dollar mine <laughs> highest bidder called it starting at one dollar hundred dollars one hundred dollars <laughs> tuesday gray going once going to i sold two hundred two hundred dollars three hundred Disney, Eric, 300. tuesday gray. you have no idea what you're getting yourselves into it's like <laughs> buying what a if, curse what if i do like 400 and then i leave him with you because that's what he wants the dog i mean he does not <laughs> Yes. He hates he me. Loves you. He, he tortures loves you. me. He, he psychologically you. tortures me, and I'm no, pretty you sure are psychologically it's psychologically tortured. There's it's a difference. some sort of weird, like <laughs> reverse, <he> <laughs> uh, like uh, Stockholm syndrome thing, where he's like testing me. I don't know what it is. He um, decided to bark at the wind all night last night, so I've had no sleep. <laughs> oh, no. There was a yeah, storm. The wind, man. Danger, oh danger, God. danger. Yeah. You're in danger. It's like, There's a whole <laughs> army outside. I'm like, no, it's the wind. You're 11. Why don't you know <laughs> what the wind is yet? Uh, worst child ever. Brad, um, have you seen the dogs that push the buttons with the words? So it'll be like, oh, stranger. I've seen so many stranger. Of that. <laughs> Food. They can press the uh, button for the word. You just need to train him so you can press the button. That would win. just be so annoying because win. he would just yeah, that would be, be pressing worse. it like, all the time. <laughs> He'd just be pressing them <laughs> for the sake of it. Um, I just give him like a bunch of different words that don't mean anything and just see which yeah. ones he likes the most. We'll just get each of you to but record At least you know, one. yeah. 
a bunch of, or I could get like the button that I have on my stream where it presses a random sound bite. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just what he <laughs> just does. Just teach him when he needs something. And so just he just <laughs> the presses button. the button. So it's yeah. like whatever. At least it wouldn't be his ridiculously high pitched barking <laughs> sound. <laughs> um, Tuesday seems pretty quiet. Speak up, Tuesday. Oh, uh -oh. let's try that my mic's not close enough. Um, but I can also turn up my game. Chick, 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 chick. Is that helping at all? Is that helping? Can you hear me more now? Yeah, I just wanted to see how long you would do that for. Oh my god, what a jerk. I feel like such an asshole. Yeah. Is this any better, Wack? Wack Steven is a producer of this show now. Thank you, Wack. So, um, I will be sending a dog to you for next week. Yes, um, yes, please. You're welcome. Thank you. And with that transaction out of the way, <laughs> we can maybe move on to today's episode. Um, the last one, we had um, the jungle crew depart the jungle. Uh, they went to the small fishing town of Tisin, where by pure luck, a ship had... Um, well, what he had done is, is it had broken down due to what can only be described as a questionable engine that I'm sure Cairo is immediately aware would probably be an illegal thing, but is also a very well-known common thing. Um, enhancements, you say luck, I say destiny. Enhancements um, to ships and things, but with the um, day... Uh, a week ago or let me see four days ago for you guys and a week ago for the other crew the um uh the fall of magic is what it's being dubbed as um uh saw the ship break down basically its engine stopped working and luckily it pulled up um on an island with lots of tinkerer gnomes who were able to um deal with the engine and the weight issue and then the crew were able to set up the sails and the um the old style of sailing with manual sails and wind um you guys arrived just in time to um find passage mostly due to free passage due to i might add soon as eyelashes um <laughs> <laughs> And the three of you were able to board on to the ship. And eye wrinkles. And I think I, it's the twinkle in the eye. Sorry, sorry. Twinkle in the eye wrinkle. Too, I'm already in character too much. I'll shut up. I'm the myself. other three um, were, uh, we joined after a week of them kind of looking into stuff, trying to arrange a, mean t a meeting with the um, prisoner of Elden Grimm at the fortress. Um, they were... Looking into things, they have an inquisitor who they're able to um, uh, ask questions of and have him bring things to them. Um, however, the things you were looking into just didn't seem to exist, which in its own way answered one of your questions in that it seems like the Inquisition have no real idea of the, the dying order, the, the greater system, the, the cosmic hierarchy above... Um, the seeming pantheon of gods, which you know to have been a kind of false pantheon. Um, the Inquisition wanted your story, your side of things. Um, Reginald managed to secure a, a meeting for you with um, Grimm, but uh, it came at cost. Two costs, really. One was that you finally hand over your side of the story, which you gave him half of. Um, and the other was that you look into um, the fortress actually requested that Reginald bring um, the Inquisition's physician, a man named Professor Piripanu. Piripanu? Um, to you. I don't know why my notes are all backwards. Oh, that's why. Um, and uh, yeah. Reginald, in turn, decided that it would be better if you went to find the professor and bring him to the fortress or bring him to Reginald, um, and then uh, that frees up Reginald to go and um, bargain your deal, which was half of the story now and half later, basically, is what I believe was the kind of plan. 
Um, Ellie, now entirely human and feeling alive again, is kind of on board with the plan and is just and is just going along with it for the most part. Um, whereas Aura is becoming more and more frustrated um, with and panicked and impatient with having to do all this running around since there is um, most likely a horrible um, control god, controlling terrible beast god known as Deovaki, wandering around, maybe setting something up, maybe he's still got magic, maybe he's doing working on terrible, horrible, paranoid things, um, and um, Aura is concerned. Also concerned for Alvin is one of the other concerns. Um, so that was where we left off. There will be like almost no time jump today as we're just going to pretty much pick up where we left off. However, we're going to jump forward a tiny little bit with the ship crew. And we're going to jump into it if you're all ready. As we head to the open ocean. Oh, exciting. And we visit the crew on the good ship Hortensia. A cargo ship. Um, we see... Actually, can I get a roll from each of you? Of course. Um, we see a, a great cargo ship um, out on a calm, open ocean. Um, behind it is the continent isle of Yoskorin, a kind of jungle with some mountainous regions. Um, and the ship finally hits its full speed. Um, there is an aging captain who relaxes his hands for a moment. And beside him there is a thin man dressed in black and white who closes a book after checking off a few names. Um, the thin, taller man turns to the slightly shorter captain and says, Captain, are you sure we can trust their information? Nobody has sailed that accursed sea and lived to tell the tale. And the captain, re-firming his hands on the ship's wheel, says, I know you've, you've known me long enough. I am never late on a shipment. The gnome says it's safe, and it'll cut our travel down by as much as a week. Yep, we'll make it just in time. Below decks. Two levels below decks. Practically sat directly upon the hull. Under a little lamplight. Between these huge pallets with these huge, massive, raw-cut marble rocks and blocks in varying shapes, there are varying people. Um, there is a halfling, there are three humans, there is a kenku bird person who's actually sat up on one of the rocks. Um, there is a half-elf and a sooner. And... You were shown down here maybe two hours ago, um, about an hour ago, the ship probably left port. Um, and there isn't anywhere for you to stay. There aren't, there aren't cots or um, any real living quarters. Um, they just pointed and said, well, this is where you want to go. This is where you go. Um, the Kenku found comfort in in a kind of nestled area almost a nest of his own um there are two um people in fact roll me another three those three there are for how seasick you are the first three okay. rolls um and you may judge them however you wish in your role play with Cairo on an eight hippo on a 10 and sooner on a 20 or how seasick you feel um the ship is relatively steady but because you're in the hull it feels really rocky um this first hour um 4112 um cairo and ippo 
specifically Ippo, you don't recognize the outfits that are on two of the people here, but Sauna, you do. You can see that there are two um, monks which are here on this ship. They are monks. I have a soft spot for monks. They are for monks. For some reason. Who, um, who are not um, local to uh, Yos Corrin. They were likely on this ship um, and they came from the giant lands. They're not giants, they're humans. Um, what are their colors? The colors they wear are whites and grays. Um, oh. And if uh, given the option, however, they would be wearing silvers. Um, Roll me another dice. All right. Nine. Nine. I I don't think you've ever met any of these people um, before. But they're known as the key, which is a Q and an I. Um, and they are... Um, and I, probably the only reason you know of these people is that they come from a line of, of diviners. Um, they are... Um, they are kind of monks of Savras. Um, Kindred, then. Kind of, yes. I wonder if I hadn't had daddy's blood, if I maybe would have gone down that path. Interesting. Right, yeah. I mean, they, they are... Uh, they're not really um, necessarily magical in nature, but any of the very, very rare temples and towers that were... Um, dedicated to Savras are often guarded by these monks. Um, would they, so they would know that name then, Savras? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's very exciting. And it's a very rare thing to see these monks. Um, and I think probably that's really, it's up to you how much you know, but it's not a lot. Okay. Um, as they're very I think secretive. I'll just go with what you've told me a little bit, yeah. And how you came by the information is up to you. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's really all all you would know. There's there's more to them, and you know that, but you don't know what it is, or maybe you've never looked into it too much. But I think maybe it strikes you as more uh, interesting now. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's a very rare thing. Um, the Kenku, um, is just wearing basic traveler's clothes. They could be from anywhere. Um, and the halfling appears to be wearing clothes that would be more native to, like, Alexandria. Seems like he's probably going home as well. And those passengers that are with you down here, um, boarded with you. None of them spoke to you. Um, they don't seem to be together apart from the two monks, um, and they've sat in different areas of the hull. So they they're not like right next to you. You three are probably on your own, although you can probably see the others. The ship's pretty damn large, but there's only one or two lanterns that light the central area of the hull here. Um, you saw several members of the ship's crew when you were getting onto the ship as well. You saw the captain who you met, Eno who you met, Wayne mm -hmm. who you met. Wayne, dearest um, Wayne. You saw two Goliaths, one with um, pinkish, reddish skin, um, kind of, kind of looks like a very sunburned person, um, is what he would, his skin tone seemed to be, kind of raw almost, um, and then a relatively grey-skinned Goliath who was slightly bigger, um, both of them armed, both of them extremely muscular, even for a for a Goliath. Um, you get the sense that maybe they were in charge of a lot of the heavy lifting of some of these rocks that are around. Um, he, he did drop the name of the one who almost crushed him to death. Wayne mm -hmm. did, I mean, right? Who, who was that again? He said it's Aussie, but it's spelt with two S's. Not that you would necessarily okay. know that, but that's for your own right. notes. And then, uh, do, do I recognize which one that might be based on his description, or no? no? Roll me a dice. Sure. Three. Not a clue. No idea. I was listening, to. I feel like he might have said the gray one, but I'm going to roll to see if I know. 
16. You um, can tell um, that one of... Probably it was more likely due to the um, expressions on their faces. Maybe you are a little more well-versed in the um, Goliath tells. Goliaths are kind of hard to read a lot of the time. They're a little... Um, they're a little alien in the way that they present themselves. Sometimes they can be very dry. Most of the time they um, are solitary or quiet a lot of the time if they're not from a, a, an inner city or something like that. And um, especially Goliaths that, that seem to be more tribalistic, like the ones that you witnessed here. Um, these two guys had on um, pants but no shirt. Um, you could see that they had lots of tattoos. Lots of different um, markings, a lot of scarification and things like that. Um, one in particular has uh, uh, piercings through his nose, through his ears. Um, and uh, uh, tribal patterns that suggest he is actually from um, probably a local tribe. And it's honestly odd that he would be on a ship. Um, and it was the larger, grey-looking Goliath. The other thing that might suggest that, and if this is if Wayne is to be believed, that this Goliath is a quote-unquote savage, um, mm -hmm. is uh, that the other one was, um, and maybe only you saw this, Cairo, uh, reading a book. Mm. And that doesn't necessarily fit Wayne's description, though. Mm -hmm. From the captain's description, everybody on this ship is a borderline pirate anyway, so who knows. Um, you saw an elf in the crow's nest, um, pretty far off, right all the way up in the crow's nest, and um, there was a very, very, very old man. Um, he looked twice as old as Ippo. Um, it's just <laughs> extremely really old his age, so human looking I can't man imagine. and um, yeah and that seemed to be the entire crew there and that's when you were getting on the ship for the most part you dealt with um, Eno who um, ensured that you went to your places told you you're on your own and that if you are called upon to help those of you um, which he pointed not to the halfling and the kenku but to the rest of you including the monks um, to perform tasks, cleaning, labor, lifting, cooking, um, and potential protection of, um, from pirates on the sea, um, then you will be called upon and just expected to muck in, basically. So far, nobody has, um, called upon you. There is, there has been lots of shouting and, um, commotion from up top as they get the rigging going and the, and the ship sets sail, but things seem to have quietened down in the last 10-15 minutes. Um, the other passengers are not saying much. The monks, stoic and silent. Classic monks. Um, the halfling seems to be cheerful. Um, and the bard is strumming a lute up in his they, stony is, crow's nest. I'm the worst person. I'm so sorry to interrupt no, you. you can ask it, me all is, the questions is, you want. Is the bard as good as a uh, uh, bow? I, I highly doubt it, but I don't think you know that you you hear uh, it sounds more like he's tuning a lute. Oh, well, but um, does it? All right. Well, Kenku. I'm thinking of bow regardless. Mm. I'm probably thinking, oh, you know, I, bow's lute is either pretty or whatever. And I'm how does bow's lute bow. look, Bisbee? That's, if you're I'm, here, I'm curious. You can just voice in. Um, it's pretty mangled up. Let's just say it's it's well loved, but uh, yeah, some strings are broken here and there, mm. and. Uh, there, there is a carving in it, though. Um, oh. uh, Ooh. I carved uh, the names of Suna and uh, Ellie and um, oh. uh, uh, Aura, like, because they mean so much to, to him. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. Well, Angled I'm definitely... Up, but sentimental. And I will tell you how nice the Kenku's loot looks. Um, pretty similar. Maybe that. All right. It's, it's and that's maybe what up. makes me think, yeah. Well, well anytime. I think probably, you know? I think probably what happens is I hear the tuning of the lute and I look around expecting to see Bo and then I realize, oh, of course not. And then I'm, you know, just thinking about Bo.
What do you guys do? You're free to Tuesday leave. Tuesday really not... wants to meet that Kenku, but Cairo has no reason to talk <laughs> yeah. to that Kenku. You're not, so. uh, you're not uh, locked down here or anything, but they did say try and stay down there for about 30 minutes, which was about 30 minutes oh, right. ago. And it's um, really rough right now, right? It's not rough, and... but it's not. It's just not comfortable. Um, oh. But it's the, the sea is but calm, but sick. you're you oh, know okay, you're on right. a we're, ship we're... that's all right. an old vessel. And just um, to clarify, the 20 means I'm totally fine, right? And then the rest of you. So which one's worse off? Is it you? Ippo? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, Ippo, I think, is Ippo's not doing all right. too good. Oh, oh okay. He'll be, he'll be all right. Oh, yeah, he's oh, okay. he's average, and I'm at an eight. I really didn't want to get Arrows, back to the sea. Oh, okay. but oh yeah, of been course, off the that makes for like sense. Three right. days. Yeah. Um, and so then, then she gets pregnant, and we don't know who the uh, father is, right? Uh, yeah. And it's like, there's a, a whole two other books after that where you're trying to figure out, you know, how it happened. But the whole time she's saying that, you know, it's I immaculate. You know, mm. she she didn't, she didn't. So then it's like, well, is it the wizard or is it, you know, it's very interesting. I, I mm. highly recommend. I I think I have the first uh, three books here, but then I... I oh, okay. I can't read right now. You can keep talking. I can't read. I can't oh. look at anything. Oh, right. You can okay. keep talking, though. You oh, okay. Keep... Sure, of course. Um, She's gonna I, anyway. I seem to have misplaced the fourth one on our on our tr our, our travels, but um, perhaps I can find another copy for you somewhere. Um, now, this, this uh, rocking back and forth, I'm totally <laughs> fine with that. You know, uh, we used to, in Dustville, yeah. that's what we did. We used to sail the kind of the the dunes, rather. So I'm, I'm, I'm very mm. comfortable with this situation. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not... Uh... Uh, w would you like something to maybe help with the, your your nausea there? I'm sh I'm sure. Yes, we we, you... we brought herbs and things, I believe, right? We could probably make a whip up a tincture or something. Yeah, probably, probably. Take anything uh, you got. Oh, well, I've all got right. Some, uh... Did you did you want to whip something up for her, Ippo? Or would you like me to do it? Well, how are you with with, with spicy things? It's supposed uh, to help, apparently. I... Yes, but spice is okay. All right, cool. I've got some red wrappers in the bag. I'll just just a wee touch of that. Should should do you right. And do uh, 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 need some water though. Well, I can go get some. Uh, I'm yeah. totally fine on my feet. Remember, so I, I'll, yeah. I'll happily do that. Mm. I'll be right back, and then I'll tell you more about the the. I'll tell you more about the romance. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. That'll be good. Thrilled. Alright, well, I'll just, let me just get a wee bit of this. I get my knife. I'll just chop mm. with this. Alright, so if, if you ever come across a Yoscorin Red Wrapper, just bear in mind that as strong as you think it is, it's at least ten times stronger than that, probably. There's really, but, really hot. But how hot are we? Is it going to hurt? Well, see, I'm only going to put a tiny wee bit in. Ah, okay. And not even any seeds, so just a tiny wee bit and then... And it'll help? Yeah, cause it'll warm your stomach a wee bit and it'll just okay. make it feel Ugh, settled. Warm stomach, okay. Well, I'm it, 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 it sounds bad, but it's not. It, it, you know, it's better than, you water. know. I've, I've, I've found some water for us here. Mm. Right, thanks. There you are. Right, um, yeah, well, a wee bit of this will do. A wee bit of this... Limp leaf mountain mint that I got. Mm. Very, just, very kind of you. Just in season, so. Just put thing. a hand on Ippo's shoulder as he's doing that. Just gently, very gently. Um, and then a wee bit of the peppermint and paper, and then a bit of this. A wee bit of root. A bit of root. That'll. Okay, and then. Mm. Yeah, that and some water, I think, will be. And here. Go ahead, darling. Yeah. Drink up. I'm, I'm going to go there. Just, might not, oh, the mint, just focus on tasting the mint. Or then... plug your nose, that always works for me. <laughs> Are you alright? That's right. The... I'll just pat her back. Like, probably a little bit do, forcefully do you... that I think, but it's probably nothing because I'm quite a weakling. Wait, do you need, is it? Is it... Water. You're right. More water? water? Okay. There but, is water but, but, in um, there. But is it spicy? Did you make it spicy? Because water's only going to make it worse. Yeah, I'm going to put a bit of like red dropper in there. It helps. Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on. Don't drink any more of that water. It's only going to make it spicier. Hold on. Yeah, well, you know, see, she's not even thinking about this. 
the ship. Do, no, all right, here, ha mm -hmm. have a little bit of this uh, goat's milk here. That'll kill the spice right away. <sighs> this old man and his spices. It's good. He, I, I, well, recently, that's what I did with my with my yeah, mango see. sponge. Is I put a wee bit of that spice in it, and it just kind of it, it took it to another level. Uh, I'm I'm gonna, sure, is I, there a? Is there? Uh, is there <laughs> and I'm um, Brad. Where do we go to the bathroom? Here? Oh no. Um, you were not told. <laughs> you were not told anything of the sort, really. You, you, you're right. You're right. Is it coming? Yeah. Is it going to come back up? You try to hold that down. It's going to help you with your nausea. Yep. Just think the spice with the goat's milk. Don't worry. The, the, see, you should have just kept with the spice. Need to be fine. I disagree with the goat milk. <sighs> well, it's to it's to kill the spice. And if she's it, her eyes were watering, it looked like she was about to choke. You no, know, the spice was the spice was helping, and the, 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 you know, like a, a dairy when she's feeling seasick. That's probably just. Right, maybe maybe just more of that story. Oh, sh sure. Or another I... one if you've got another <sighs> one that's more interesting. You don't think you don't think the story is interesting? No, I said more interesting. See, this one's interesting, and there's another one's even because she needs her attention to be even more focused on. Okay, well, why don't we let her decide which story she'd like to hear? Well, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Well, See, yeah. look at oh. that. I thought she needed more distraction by something even more interesting. Who knows? Maybe there's some fairies that fall in love with an angel horse person. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I mean, that is why that is why this one's called the stallion. Because I imagine oh. eventually we're going to meet a centaur of some sort. <sighs> no? Horse person. Right. Okay. Well, you yep, know sure. what is very interesting? Do you see those? Do you see those monks over there? Yeah. In the gray? Very mm -hmm. rare. Very, very rare to see anyone like that. Oh, I thought you were. I don't, yeah, when you said I don't that, sounded like you're. Any before. Oh. The way I sounded, that sounded like what? It's very rare. It sounded like you were talking about a wine or something. Well, I mean, it, it's sort of, you know, it's a religion or a, a group of people. It's, it's very rare to see them. They're usually very secluded, keep to themselves. You know, mm. living on mountains and all that, never seeing anything of the world. Do they talk? You know how that is? Are they those kind of monks? Do they not talk? I don't actually know. I've never met one before. Well, maybe we should go check. Over. <laughs> yeah, you can ask them if any old ladies moved in near them, and that's why they're moving away. Hello. Uh, you approach these two monks. Um, as you walk over, Kyra, you're walking over as well. Kyra, are you speaking? Are you muted? Oh, you're no, not. not. Okay, there we yet. go. <laughs> you walk over to these two monks. Um, both of them are bald, um, shaven, bald, waxed. In fact, it looks more like... I thought you said whack at first. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> bald like whack. Um... Considerably younger than Wack. Um, considerably younger than you. They m maybe oh, right. okay. are in their mid 20s. Um, but they're in um, what looks like peak physical condition. Um, wearing. The clothing is really not too dissimilar to the things that you might wear in, in Dustfell wraps mostly. Right. Um, but uh, you can see that they have small packs that um, contain uh, sleeping equipment um, and wrapped around them is a very thick looking coat, the type of thing you might find on the top mm. of a mountain. Um, both of them have staves like uh, you. Um, they have um, wraps around their hands, um, wraps around their feet, um, and their shoes are not really shoes. They just have a piece of wood um, that's wrapped tightly to their feet with these mm. wraps that run up their legs. Um, each of them has a pair of uh, um, very thin-looking um, sticks attached to their hips. They might be weapons, but they also look almost too small um, right. to be anything like that. But they could be some 
thing that they use like as a as a weapon but they also have these staves um and both of them have um several tattoos not just on their bodies but on their face um the uh gentleman has a kind of crescent moon looking um tattoo in the center of uh, his oh. forehead um and the girl has right what's that that's a re reference to divination right very yes. tied with the moon yes the girl has um lines tattooed up her face um lots of like kind of like uh tiger Amazing. lines or something like that um then they have varying other things they also have lots of areas of their body which are tattooed uh with stars and dots and points and things like that um you can roll me a dice if you'd like i would love that to do that closer inspection that you can make out 10 10 um you don't know what necessarily but these are kind of like constellations and stuff they seem to actually be accurate star um maps um on their bodies the two of them um upon your approach upon your approach um kneel before you uh what all to their uh knees their heads touching the hull they put their staffs to the side well this is very confusing because i was feeling a little un underdressed and 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 unworthy here in their presence with all their beautiful tattoos and everything what 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 excuse me what are you doing they do not answer you oh um well i i was just uh I didn't mean to disturb you. Uh, my name is Suna, and I just, uh, it's just so rare to see Savras uh, uh, monks that I, I thought uh, I, I would come over and introduce myself. I, uh, well, uh, I, I have some lemon cake here. It might be a, a, a day old stale, but it, it would mean so much to me if you would uh, take, take some with you. And I, I will uh, go into my bag and I will pull out the, the, uh, cake and and kind of like do they even look up they're not looking up uh they're listening okay, all right um so i'll just put it down on the floor then speak though they don't look up but they speak to you what oh. languages do you speak uh oh i, I don't know. have my old character sheet open uh might you give me just you have a it on your you it's all right, you i have it, it on the other one yes you, uh, you've got it on your bio part oh your character sheets oh wonderful i took all the relevant uh, information that you'd need from the right. old world uh, into the new nothing they probably speak unfortunately common gnomish primordial and infernal those mm. two i'm not quite so proud of in um, primordial oh well all right then broken primordial okay spliced in part with a language that you don't seem to understand um you hear one say to the other um you hear one you hear the 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 boy say to the girl this not her the girl says back is is her there's more well, in there than that but you pick up that right uh well i don't know who you think i am but i assure you i'm but you know i'm just suna you can call me suna and i just came over to 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 give you some cake uh and and good luck on your travels wherever you may be going and and all that just from from one uh diviner to another that 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 was it Both of them stand up and hand you a card each. Um, um, what, what is this? Two very crude looking tarot cards with the tower on. Oh. Is this my tower? just looks no, I'm, like I'm a saying very... that to them oh, you say that to them yes i do uh, have you seen my tower hmm. 
Oh, wow. Um, they stand, um, but they seem to be, um, they won't, they don't make eye contact with you. They keep their heads down. They, the, the boy is pretty tall. I can't remember how tall you are. You're five eight, so he's taller tall. than you. The girl's about your height. They keep their heads down. The, they don't make any eye contact with you. The boy says, Blue Bolt. Fuck. Is this boat not blue? Mm -hmm. It is blue. Mm. I thought for a second they were talking about the other one that I considered taking. The girl looks to you and says, in fact, actually, ah, oh, finally. She makes eye contact with you and says, you know us. Uh, I know of you, yes. I, I recognize your robes and... You and I see us. Do I see them? Do I truly see them? May I attempt this? <laughs> what do you want to say? I think I have... Um, it might be a fun way to do this. Uh, let's see. I have an interesting ability, um, but I think... Well, I have insight, uh, first of all, but I also have um, this really strange one where I seem to kind of, like, leave my own body. I can't seem to find it anymore. Hold on. Oh, invoke. But I think that takes time. But spiritually, you leave your worldly body behind. It's like going I wonder, and doing an hour-long uh, you know, yoga see. session uh, or I see. So if I don't want to speak to myself, am I, am I able to uh, use that ability to kind of maybe see where they're from or divine in any sort of way? I guess we can't anymore. There's no magic. Uh, so, really perhaps, so perhaps I will say, um, not as of late. Unfortunately. And uh, I suspect it's the same for you. You're speaking in primordial, yes? Uh, yes, it's also a bit broken, by the way. There is no way for you to not speak broken primordial because you don't have the mouth for it. Yes, um, yes. The, and it sounds crazy to everyone else. It's like, <clears throat> it's like grunts and if you were just bashing rocks together to the best of your ability with your mouth. Um, clicks and teeth smashes and just these loud guttural grunts um and it sounds really weird i think compared to most other languages um and uh the um boy they look a little confused they look a little confused um then they begin to look around um the boy says, we may show. Sure, of course. Please. Yes, of course. Whatever you need. Would you like, would you like me, would you like to sit down? Maybe we could have a proper conversation. He just starts moving around. All right. Um, he starts looking around um, and he runs over to a piece of marble rock. He touches one or two of them before finding one that has kind of a flat surface and then uh, looks around and pulls up um, another rock. Um, begins to scratch into the front of the rock and it doesn't do anything and he points to the rock. Is way too marking. You're trying to mark the marble? I'm so sorry. I, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. The girl looks around. Mm. She looks to you and says, he's not full picture. Oh, no. I doubt many people know that. She looks do, do you confused. You, do, do you speak... Um, Anything other than this language. I try Gnomish. 
uh, nothing. Yeah. They look a little confused. Um, you hear one um, uh, person behind you, a voice that you haven't heard yet, come from above the uh, Kenku, which if Cairo and Ippo have been anywhere nearby or have been witnessing this, I think everyone else is kind of watching this, um, but the Kenku was oh. very interested in looking down from the perch from up above, oh. probably closer to you than the others, yeah? I'm sorry. I understand what he's trying to tell me right now. It just took me a minute. I'm, I'm old. you got to give me some time. They're not transporting marble. They're doing something else. Is that what he's trying to tell me? And that's what I'm saying here. Are you saying they're transporting something other than marble? I have to roll for each of them. Give me a second. That's what I'm doing here. They both just look at you very confused. Um, Sabra's sake, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. The Kenku from above you, but oh, closer right. than you uh -huh. probably expect. It maybe startles you a little. He says, I think oh. they're speaking giant. What? I think they're speaking giant. Who, them or me or us? What? Uh, them lot. They're speaking giant, I think. I don't know it, but I can mimic it. Udara Naga. It's giant. Is he doing primordial? He's doing... He's not. No, he's speaking a different he's, language. Oh, right. Oh. 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 Well, um, you can mimic it, but you don't speak it. Is that right? Yeah. Does anyone here speak giant? In I know a there perfect, are giants here, but a, I'm like... In a perfect Suna voice, he says, Does anyone here speak giant? Back to the everyone in, in exact... Yeah. Well, that's a little alarming, but very, very skilled. The happy-looking halfling, who is probably the furthest away from the rest of you, who has just been kind of sitting quite happily on his pack um, with his hands behind his back, looks up to you, but doesn't respond to anyone, goes back to his thoughts, closes what his eyes. The, what about the... Oh, the giants are probably working. Hmm. There's no one else below decks with you. They aren't here, right. You can okay. hear them moving around um, out there every now and then. Well, um, there are, there are uh, some giants on board, and perhaps we could, um, uh, we need a translator, you see, so I can understand you. The boy cocks his head, the girl says, translator, and then she moves towards you, and kind of nodding her head, holds her hand out towards your head, your face. Uh, I, I just immediately put my head in her hand because yeah. I think she, she can translate. She puts two fingers to the middle of your forehead and says, Savras. Yes. Me, what? And Savras. nothing happens, I imagine. Nothing happens. She's just saying Savras. I... I know, I was just maybe hoping I was wrong about magic being gone. I was just, you know, any any hope. I was expecting this, but, you know, hoping for something else. The um, boy holds his hand out and touches your forehead too. Now two of them are touching your forehead with two fingers, then they touch each other's forehead and create a sort of triangle here, and they say, We see you. We see you. Uh, I will then um, lower her hand from my head. Um, I'm afraid not. The boy shakes his head. The girl nods her head. And then they turn to each other. And then they begin to speak their own language or, or yes. what sounds maybe like giantish. Um, relatively quickly, still quite slowly for what um compared to other languages but you hear them just speaking back and forth and they start to have a little bit of a conversation just in a right. essentially a foreign language for a moment they do a lot of pointing to you um and a lot of confused faces when the kenku called out in sauna's voice i assume that was loud enough for oh, yes. and I to hear. For sure. You probably are close enough to have heard most of this conversation as well. 
There's really okay. nothing happening here. The Kenku stopped yeah, coming. I think I, I perk up at that a little bit just because it's odd, but when they touch her, I think I'd wander over and just say to Suna, is everything okay over here? Oh, oh just... yes, yes. They pick up their staffs nice. and oh, they, it's, and they it's, it's take right. slightly it, defensive positions. It's all right. It's all, it's, it's all right. Darush. Um, I just I saw believe, them touching you. Yes, I believe they've mistaken me for someone Darush, else, but I, 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 I would like to have some some uh, some cake and uh, maybe some tea with them, if, if that's all right. You're welcome to join us. Uh, um, oh, no, I just wanted to make sure that you were okay. Is What were they trying to do noises. when they touched you? I, I just, I think they think I'm someone I'm not. Oh, and you can't talk. No, that's why the Kinku yes, said they're speaking giant. We, we 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 can kind of communicate a little bit. Um, but I look at them all of a sudden excited, and I mock drawing and I say pictures, and I, I don't think I have any paper. And you're saying this in common, so they. Just, yeah, I just did this to that, like, oh, you know, they um, look. Ex then I will say it. Extremely in... confused. And they're still holding their staffs up. Yeah. Uh, Slightly uh, defensive. I will say that. I do have some notes. Um, so per perhaps could you could you go grab my, my bag just over there? Sure. Um, I, I set it down to get the cake. Um, in there should should be uh, some some paper or and, and, and a quill. Um, okay. And I'm just listening to her as I walk to go get that. Uh, and I'll bring that uh, over. And I'll show it to them. Perhaps, uh, draw art. The boy takes it and takes the the ink and, and the pen. Um, now that I know she's okay because Cairo feels like shit, I'm going to go sit back down. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you know. can sit, Cairo. You can just sit right here. We're about to have some cake. Oh, it's, okay. it's nice to meet new people. Mm. Mm. Ippo, did you want to sit over here? Sure, me as well. I mean, you probably don't want any cake. It's a day old stale, and it's you know mm, not as good as when it's fresh. But you're welcome to have a slice if you'd like. Well, I, I think maybe, maybe it's better for for Cairo. It might make her tummy feel a wee bit better. So. I, oh, it mm. might make. You're right. It, it might make her feel better. So I'll leave out two slices. Um, if there's enough. Oh, there there's plenty. Um, all right, I am. Um... Right. How, what is he drawing? Um, you see him fervently drawing a picture on the ground. Um, it's not too poorly drawn either. It's relatively well done, but it's just sketch and fast and quick. You can see that he's drawing what looks like a mountainside. Um, in the center of the mountain, though, he begins to draw a tower. Um, then he begins to color in the uh, night sky, leaving patches for lots and lots of stars. Um, and then lots and lots of stars, like what I saw up on my turn. Pushes it towards you. Uh, uh, I will reach back into my bag and I will pull out my um, my deck, my mother's deck, actually. Oh, um, <laughs> enough of that uh, and I will pull out the tower in response he nods and then looks at the girl for the first time they smile and they become a little more animated and then he holds his hand up and then goes back to drawing and takes another sheet and begins to draw a second thing um, the girl is just looking to you and then the drawing and then to you again they seem to be a little more animated um what do you guys do? He's sitting drawing for a moment. Uh, I'll just sit and uh, give cake to everybody and try to keep us in a tight circle so we're not drawing too much attention. Yeah. I'll be eating cake. <laughs> Are you paying for pictures with cakes? So what's happening here? Uh, no, I just thought it'd be nice to... Um, listen, in another life, I maybe would have joined them. This is something I would have aspired to do, perhaps. So I just thought it'd be nice to introduce myself. Hmm? Well, they seem nice enough. I wish I could 
understand them better and vice versa, but would mm. I have a story for them? You will. He thrusts I'm another sure sheet towards you. Oh. oh, okay, and what's this one? It's a second drawing of the same looking tower, um, a little more mm. detail, um, but above the tower there's a huge glowing star. Coming out of the star is like an almost cartoonish speech bubble. Inside the speech bubble is um, an image of a ship that looks really like the ship you're on. Oh. Okay. He touches the middle of his head. Oh. See? Oh. It, uh, oh, I, 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 I understand. You, you're meant to be here? You, you, um. You, meant to be be here? Yes, you, you saw me here. I see what you mean. I see you. Uh, you, you were saying past tense, as in you saw a vision of this? Is that correct? Um. Uh, he sits back down and <laughs> starts drawing on another sheet of paper. Well, this is go. so frustrating. I just but, think of it as a game. <laughs> fun, past time. But it's not a game. <laughs> There's so much at stake. So I just, I just need to know if, if they, if they, if they saw me the way Cairo saw me. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, right. I think that could be important. And well, if that's the case, then maybe we're supposed to run into them. Maybe. Well, maybe you can ask them if they saw that. You know, you know, that, you know who. That... Uh, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um. I'm frantically flipping through uh, my cards here. Uh, oh, sure, really, it's going to be the last one that I pick for real. What about this one? And I'll hold up the devil. Hmm. And, uh, Cairo, can you draw what you saw? The hands over Bologna. Oh. Uh. Discreetly, like now. Yep. The boy continues to fervently draw. The girl looks at the card. See? See? She shakes her head. Yeah. It was worth a shot. Yes, it was worth a shot. Are any of your friends, though, any of the other cards? Maybe they can, maybe they've saw, you know, the rest well, of them. That, that is a very good point. I'll hold my picture up to Suuna for her approval. Uh, like uh, oh, how does it look? Um, should I roll for it or? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, it's up. To, I'm. I'm genuinely just asking. Like, are you a talented artist or does it look no, like? No, and I think I am feeling a little sick. <laughs> so. <laughs> the edges like, are oh, wobbly. All right. Right. Well, I think it, 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 that's great. Um, I, I think if you've seen it, you know exactly what it is. Uh, go, go ahead and show them. Uh, uh, see? And what do you show? Showing her picture the, of the hands over the hands. Bologna. The hands? Yes. Mm -hmm. Give me a dice roll. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. Eight. An eight. Same as my seasickness. Yeah, it's not the greatest drawing of all time. Um... And you're showing the girl, and she's mm -hmm. going to look at it. She um, she grabs at the boy who's drawing, and he kind of gives her a look of like, why are you nudging me? I'm drawing. And then he looks up at the car, the, the paper that you have. He turns to the girl, and they they um, nod their heads a little. Um, they say in in full giantish this time to you, Cairo, I don't... Suna, do you know what they're saying? I have I... no idea what they're saying, but they seem to recognize you or understand that maybe you they, are the same. They're pointing at each other and then they point yes. at Cairo. Yes, they think you are the same. Um, or at, at least that you've... And they point um, at Suna. Well, I, well, I haven't seen any of this, but uh, we are all connected, yes. Yes. Um, uh, uh, the boy hands I'll you hold, another piece of paper. I'll, I'll hold up the hermit. Me? Yes? They, hand, no. they, oh. they hold up the tower. Oh, right, okay. Uh, what about uh, death? 
Have you seen Ellie? Uh, My friend. Uh, of both four. of them cock four. their heads kind of sideways. The boy thrusts the next piece of paper at you. He's pushing it towards you. And then sits down and starts to draw a third one. The third piece of paper... What Let's about Bo? Have you seen my friend Bo? Is he all right? Oh, take a breath, take a breath. They. Well, if they've seen me, maybe they've seen Ellie and Bo and Aura and 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 maybe Three. they're all right. And the girl is shaking her head. She just keeps pointing at her own star? her own tower card, She's pointing it and thrusting it towards you. Just take, take a breath, it's all right. Take a take a look at their pictures and you know. So Una, they knew the hands. They knew the hands. Well, I just really want to know if they know if my friends are all right. Well, they, they're handy folk. I'm sure they'll be fine. Don't worry. But they don't feel fine to me. What's the, what's the third picture here that, that the boy drew? You see... Um, you see the, the same ship from the previous drawing that looks a lot like this ship. Um, uh -huh. next to a port, next to the mountainside with the tower on it. Hey, where's that? Uh, oh, uh, uh, sorry, Brad, do, do I recognize if the, is the tower, uh, CT, like, is, is that, because that's where I went first to go find this ta tower, mm -hmm. uh, but it it's also moved around, so is, do I recognize that as, like, a CT thing, or? Dude, does the mountain look like a, one of the your school yeah, mountains? That's, does it look like it's supposed to be It actually doesn't here? look like any tower you've ever seen before. Ah, so it's not my tower with the stars, and okay, all right. Probably not. Um, what about the mountain? Is that a familiar looking mountain? Is it standing? Oh my god, are they not actually taking us to the right place? It's just kind of cartoonish looking mountains. They just look like cheaply, you know, quick triangles. Just, yeah, all right, well. Sketch mountains. So, um, uh, you, what? You can understand them a little. A uh, little. I point to the hands and I, I ask you, ask them for a name. Point to the hands, ask them for a name. What do they call? Uh, do, do you have a map by chance? Perhaps they could just point to it on the map. Uh, I mean, I, I want to know what they call. Oh, okay. This entity. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I point to the hands then. Uh, and I say, uh, who? Primordial? Yes. Um, the girl shakes her head and says, Urche Darkness. Yes, that's right. That's right. Deaveki, I will whisper in common. Deaveki. Deaveki. And I look. Deaveki, yes. We seek. She points to her stick and holds it up. Um. I don't understand what she's trying to tell me. Well, it looks, I think she's seen I've got the mystic. Like I, I, fighting, like she'd fight. It sounds like she says she's ready, but I don't think she understands that we, 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 there's no magic. You cannot help. But we have to do something. Maybe only hit somebody with it. I cannot, I cannot rightly send these people of, of, of such a rare kind into a battle that I, I know that they cannot help in. Well, well the pictures look like, you know, that, that boat looks like this boat and they've been pointing at you then, then, and you said, so, like, maybe the... The tower, ask for a name, ask where, or a map. Can they uh, draw a map? Uh, um, I'll point to the tower with the ship and... and I'll actually say, when. Hmm. Um, the the boy looks up and says, She looks and points at it and, say, and then points at herself and the other boy. It, uh, he's home. Oh. They're uh, home? Oh. oh, I wouldn't understand that. Pointing back oh. and forth. Oh, uh, uh, they they said um, 
it, it's their home. The, the tower is their home? But they but, uh, keep uh, pointing uh, at you and the uh, tower. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. This picture, uh, past or future. See? They both shake their heads. Uh, um. I need to. I need to sit down. Here, here. Take a seat. Um, wait, 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 I can try and figure out with just pointing and and drawing. Maybe what you're trying to figure out. Can Can you draw a map, Ippo? Well, if I draw anything, I'm likely to, you know, spill fine. the cake. Yeah, I've not well put this. We haven't looked at a map in a very long time. You know, I mean, I could probably do your scoring roughly. I just, you know, where is that tower? Where are they from? The boy what? thrust another piece of paper forwards towards Suna. Uh, right. Uh, what's this one now? You can see um, the ship pulled up um, next to a town. The only real thing drawn in the town is a um, a building with like a big shard of crystal sticking out of it that looked like the one that you found in Tsin. You can see the ship um, there, and you can see a bunch of passengers getting on. They're all just kind of shadowy figures, just like um, placeholder stick figures almost. What we just experienced. Yeah, uh, but um, uh, one of the passengers getting on is an almost like kind of comically cartoonish tower card with arms and legs. They're calling me the tower. Right. And he points at it. At the tower. Me? Yes. And then he points at him, uh, the girl, and uh, uh, Cairo, and says, We see you. Yes. You mean it? I mean, I did. I saw you. Yes. The vision. Well, it, they it, did too? I, I, I believe that's what they're trying to say, yes. Um, wh why don't we all sit down and have some, some cake? He turns You're, around and starts drawing another picture. Oh, oh. So, um, are we going to get more of these people who are seeing you? I Is don't, that... I don't know. We maybe ask them, maybe they know more, more, more tower, point to the, the tower, do you think? I, I don't know if I want to know that, but I'm... Well, more than Mary. I huh? have a hard enough time being responsible. You're not. Cairo here. Knowing it, what it, she's seen, and you know, someone might shoot her. No, it, it's all right. It's not. Uh, you're not responsible. Uh, I'll, I'll look at the the girl and uh, Suna, Toby, and I Ippo. as I point to at uh, uh, right. Sorry, I Ippo, and uh, Cairo. And then I Una. move my hand to her. Tobipo. Mm. Cairo. And Suna. The boy points to you and says, Mursh. To me? Girl looks to you and back to him. Mulch. Does that, does, this, does that mean tower? Yeah, that's probably tower. But please call me Suna. Suna. Mulch. Uh, oh, all right. Are you such I tried. Excuse you. It sounds mm -hmm. like mulch. Like I'm just, you know, poop. I, I know what I said. Mulch. Yep. Mulch. Right. And Toby. Ippo. Well, well, if you, if you just let them. Call you Toby, because now they're gonna. They already don't understand. It's it's all right, but uh, I'll take my hand out and, and point to to her, and you. Do they not fucking have names? We can name them, maybe. She is confused for a second, and then the boy hits her quite roughly. Hello, Missy. And she says, um, uh, Tia, 
Tia. That's Veras. a beautiful name. Tia and Veras. Tia, Veras. Yeah. Veras, uh, 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 okay. like like in Veritas, like in truth. That's a beautiful name. I just look confused. That's, yeah. uh, that's a lovely Veras. name. Uh, right. Um, Veras, uh, Tia, uh, please sit. I, um, the boy is drawing fervently. The girl is like looking back and forth. Um, the boy thrusts another piece of paper at you. All right. Mm -hmm. Is this one? It's a. It's a, a a strange, shadowy figure with the hands, that were drawn almost exactly the same way as how Cairo did. Um, in the center of this kind of shadow that's kind of looming over the piece, there is um, the sort of cartoonish-looking tower card with arms and legs. Um, and then the monks are standing either side of you with their staffs up in a kind of defensive-looking posture. And they say... And then they point at Toby, and then they point at Cairo. We I just gasp see. when yeah. I see the, the hands and the... So they do, I think they do want to help. The what boy holds his hand up. Iron? Uh, hey, one. And then he starts drawing again. No oh, one more picture, I think. Uh, well, yeah. Suna, I don't think you're stopping them. I think if they've seen it too, they're they're not going to leave you now. I mean, and you you got you have to respect. It's their choice, you know. You can't. Oh, don't agree. don't talk to me about respecting people's choices. <laughs> I put a hand on Toby like, don't. <laughs> okay. <Yes. coughs> throw oil on fire. The The, um, the girl points to uh, Keepy. I'm alarmed. Eroshon? Keepy. Ush, ush. My, my, my bird. As soon as can you... Tell her my bird, Cairo bird. Tell them it's not food. Just in they case don't, they don't think it's food. Calm Pardon? down. There's a smile on her face. Um, I'd be smiling too if I thought I had a nice bird. Uh, 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 bird. Uh, it, um, Keep uh, I'll say in a primordial uh, familiar, because I think they would understand that word at least. All uh, mages usually have one. She doesn't. Pet. She shakes um, her head. Pet, pet, pet. pet. Friend. 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 Friend, yes. Friend. So I'm, Friend. I'm saying that in primordial. And so I'll, I, uh, yeah. I'll hold up. Keepy's sitting up on a, a crate. I'll hold up my uh, my wrist and, and he'll um, come flying she claps. down. I, I, I point to the, the photo that the boy has drawn. Uh, Danger. Danger. For you. She um, stops clapping and nods her head. Danger. Um, no magic. Very dangerous. Uh, she points to her own staff. No magic. Right. She just hits the ground really hard with the stick. Oh, I told you she could swing that thing. <laughs> Jesus. She holds it up. Oh, right. Do you, right, very, very, very good. Walsh will help you. Yeah, sure. All, all right, all right, all right. She points um, to uh, you and says Walsh. Then she points to um, Veraz and she says, Sister. Wait, I think you mean brother, right? Because Tia, Tia's the girl, correct? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, she is purposely mistaken. Uh, that's uh, a brother, you sister. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sister. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, um, sister. Um, 
Let, let's let's calm down. Yes, yes. Fine, you may come with us. But let's just sit and have some cake for now. The boy hands you one last piece of paper. But his face looks I, kind of forlorn. I need to think. Okay, um, what's this now? Uh, on the paper is what looks like the image of um, a, a castle. Kind of an odd looking castle, but you know, it's kind of again, it's slightly cartoonish in its crudeness. Um, there's darkness coming up out of it, lots of it. Um, yes. And in front mm -hmm. of the castle is the tower card, but it's all torn up. Where? When? Ask them where? When? He it's points to the other cards, um, uh, pages. And says, uh, inum, and then in primordial to you, um, not, uh, happen, happen, not happen, happen. He separates What's the he previous. What's he pointing to when he says not happen, happen? The first five drawings he separates from the last one and then points at the, uh, last one. And says not happen or happen? He says happen. Yes, uh, I thought as much. And then points at the others. Not happen? Happen? Happen. Because the others have been tower, us. Yes, they've all, they all happened. They were all real, yes. Happen. And I, I, I'll just, I'll just, uh, put a hand uh, on on their their shoulder. Um, it's all right. If that happens, I, I'm okay. Most. As long as we we stop it. Yes, whatever that word means. Right. Um, please sit. I don't want to attract uh, eyes. Too many eyes. I'll say in primordial again. The Kenku above you says, What the fuck was all that about? <laughs> A cake. Would you like some? Yeah, I'd love some fucking cake. Uh, we're also right. we're opening an art gallery and you wanted to. What is it? Is it addition in? We're just trying to understand each other. We Ain't don't open speak an the art same gallery language, with that but... shit. Well, you know, it's, it's just it's taste. You know what I mean? And... Uh, uh. Different tastes. For yeah, different... I'll play you a song. You make me some cake. Gr great. Do you happen to know the Butcher of Bame? <laughs> it's only been a little while. No. The Butcher of Bame. That's no. unfortunate. It's a good one. You should learn it if you get the chance. Who the fuck wants um, a story about Bame? It's a good, it's a good one. Trust what'd the me. What did the Butcher do? Took care of a lot of people. Right, you know the shot. you know the you know the family that runs Bame. No. Oh well, let me let me tell you about Bame. All right, I'll write a song. It, starts, so it begins this way. Yeah. This starts I'll plucking the you. starts plucking the uh, the loot. All right. Um, probably a good time to go to a break. Um, we will return after these messages from Wax Stephen. Hi everybody, it's me, Wank Steven. And I'm starting Didn't an OnlyFans. I know. <laughs> oh not. Please work, OBS. Alright, I don't know what's going on. Okay, there might be a trailer that plays. It's me, Wank Steven. I'm starting an OnlyFans. Thank you. Um <laughs> he's from New York. Uh maybe not then. Alright, I'll tell you what, we're gonna go to a break. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back in a few minutes and we're going to switch over to the uh, crew, the city crew in Bologna, hot on the trail of a physician, maybe, or maybe not. We'll find out what they're going to do. Thanks for watching. See you in a few. Back in Bologna at the Assassin's Guild about 15 minutes or so after we last saw them. Um, 
Aura, Ellie, and Bo. Um, head back to the Assassin's Guild. I think you probably make your way in. Head down to the kind of common area that kind of um, sits at the center of these intersecting hallways, these long hallways. Um, the relatively dimly lit um, Assassin's Guild. And um, what are you guys doing? I would walk back to, because I think I was ahead of them, I would go straight back to uh, Zach's office. Right, knock knocking or door. walking in? Knocking. Knocking. You knock on the door? Yes. You hear a muffled come in on the other side. I walk in. Hmm. About as calm as last time. Back so soon. Well, we talked to the Inquisition, or actually, no, we just talked to Reginald, and uh, they want us to find a doctor. Dr. Panu, have you heard of him? Hmm. Didn't he cure a werewolf? Without magic, apparently. Uh, apparently. That's what they say. Hmm. So, they want us to find him, and I was thinking... They want us to find him, or they want you me. to find him? They want me to find him. Apparently, he's been missing for a couple weeks. Hmm. Hangs out in a part of town. Marana's never been there. Hmm. Do you think we have any information on him? Possible. We have yeah. to, if he's a renowned doctor, right? Well, that depends if anybody's put a contract on him before. Not many people want doctors dead. There are some, though. Not every doctor is good. I can look through our records, if you'd like. All right. The, uh... The Inquisition. If... I'm not assuming this, but if you had plans to strike them, they're pretty weak right now, but they might be uh, ramping up again, I have a feeling. Hmm. We With assume the they're of, weak. I assume they are weaker than they were when they had magic and artifacts. There are many sects to the Inquisition, the Arcani yeah. Inquisition. Just it has no Arcani. Yes, but then there's the Inquisition of Alexandria, the Inquisition of Dandaral, the Inquisition of this, that, the other. There are secrets beyond secrets, and secrets that keep those secrets in that organization. Yeah, well, you're good at knowing and finding out secrets, aren't you? And keeping them. Mm -hmm. They operate quite on their own terms, and we are just one guild in one city. Are you saying no one else wants to take them out anywhere? Especially after all that's happened? I mean, if you think about it, this whole losing of magic... I mean, it was an Arcanide, or that's what they think, so... Technically, wouldn't the Inquisition be at fault? That's gotta piss off a lot of people. Yes, but... Who can hold the Inquisition at fault? The Inquisition of the last line. For what? When no one else can get the job done, it's usually them. Are you saying we couldn't get the job done? They couldn't even... They couldn't even get the job done on not killing magic. Hmm. We can kill one king, or a prince, or a noble, a common urchin. But an entire organization might be beyond us in our skill set and measure. What do you suggest then? We just keep playing nice with them and hope they don't try to shut us down. We can heighten our position. We can strengthen ourselves from this chaos. I say that we don't remain under them. Perhaps we expand to other cities as well. Mm. The thing that we have in our benefit is we never relied on magic. That's true. 
I think we need more information. Maybe a little more time. Right. See if someone put a hit out on this doctor. So maybe we have some information. Mm. Obviously, it hasn't been... Well, he might be dead. He's not been seen for two weeks. Why do they want the doctor? They said... You know, they didn't say why. They just told me to go find him so I could get in and talk to our buddy Grimm, but kind of want their doctor for ourselves if he's that wanted. Seems odd that they would have you fetching a doctor. I would have thought they'd like to keep you close. Apparently not. I'm sure I'm being followed still and watched. Hmm. It's possible. I can have somebody tail you as well, see if they pick up on something. That might be good. Hmm. Someone that's actually good at uh, staying hidden. So. Well, most people are missing at the moment. Half of yeah. our lot went to Streledo, which is an issue. I don't know how they're going to get back in time for this world takeover of yours. Don't want to take over the world. Hmm. But we can take over the city. So, well, see what you know. I'm going to go talk to the others and see if we can find any information. Hmm. Very well. I shall look now. He stands up, moves over to his bookshelf, and just starts moving through them, looking along the lines. Yeah, I just turn and walk out. And walk back towards the common area, where I assume the other two would be, still. Do you have any prongs? Like anything that's, like, sharp? Are you cooking? Are you, well, I, no. Yes. Potatoes again? Yeah. Making some, like, wet potatoes and sometimes if you have i don't believe you uh see you went all kind of scary you know you might actually make a good assassin after all this is said and done except for you your, your anger we got to get that under control you're not supposed to let that be a motivating factor in the thing you just got to kill someone She's and leave. not angry uh, there's a little bit however i'm worried also why do you have to talk to that guy all the time like why can't we go do our own thing what is is he we, like we can do our own thing he's gonna help us though see i think we're being tailed so we're going to have someone following us to see if some, they can spot someone tailing us, which might be helpful because then we know that Inquisitions, they don't trust us, which they probably don't anyway. Now, this doctor, didn't you say something about your friend back in BAME? What about Alvin? Yeah, the, the little one that thinks I'm a vampire. Yeah, he's not doing, he was, it's after we woke up, he was like weaker. He wasn't feeling very, um good and he kept saying that oh i'm doing a little bit better but he was getting like more pale as each hour passed if we find this doctor i mean can't we could you know keep him and have alvin show up and have the doctor look at him if he doesn't use magic he uses medicine i don't i don't know what this doctor does i mean i he cured someone from being a werewolf i mean but that was when it was still magic. They said that he didn't use magic to do it. That seems like a rumor to me. Like, we're trusting that this guy knows what he's... But it's also, a long we're... shot, but it's a shot. If something's wrong with your friend, it would be good to have someone who has medical expertise of some sort to look at him that doesn't solely rely on magic, right? Because we don't... No one has magic. I, I, I guess... Know. I, I, I just, that's not a motivating factor to me because I don't know who this guy is from anybody and I just want to fix this for everybody. Oh, I know. But I think this is a time where if we get a doctor, we can keep him and have him look at your friend. Alvin is like a three days trip away. He also shouldn't travel the way that he's feeling. And we still have a week or two until we hear anything from Zauna. Or see anything, I guess. That's if the stars align. We yeah, if don't we don't know. Because that's a the seas and without magic, and you know they can be rough. And 
if there's pirates or something out there and they know there's no magic, it's a great time for them, just like it's a great time for three thieves and assassins. If I know Suna, she is not going to tolerate pirates. Yeah, well. Or she'll charm them and make them a nice cake. Uh, and then maybe they'll get here faster because the pirates will be on their side and then they will get here really quickly. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but we'll go with that, yeah. Uh, if you send word to your friend, um, Alvin, maybe see how he's doing. Like you you did, uh, wait, yeah, you did us. You sent uh, your bird to find us, right? And uh, yeah, with the note. Um, Buns has just been hanging out on my horn, and so I yeah. put my finger up and I write a message. I have like little bits of paper, and I start writing a message to Clex because I know Alvin will lie to me. So I'm gonna start writing a little note um, to check in on Alvin, and then I tie it to Buns's leg. I gotta go outside to 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 send him, but um uh, yeah 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 we uh we we gotta hang out just for a little bit. We're checking to see if we have any ledgers on this uh, doctor, but yeah. Uh, I'll be back. And then I, I make my way outside. I look at Bo and I'm like, so prongs, huh? You're going to kill Reginald with prongs? I, I, gonna... No, that, that, no. We do, no. It, I like open my like... jacket and I have an assortment of, of daggers and I'm like, prongs? I, well, I mean, I got well, We got all those, but no, it's, it's nothing <laughs> like that. Rest assured. You know, we, well, we were just going to maybe rough him up a little bit so we can get some answers. It's not going to work. You know that these guys are like trained against torture just like we are. And by we, I mean me, not. Oh, yeah, you know. no, I mean, obviously I, I am not. Not that I believe that you would tell anyone if they tortured you, but I kind of believe you might tell people something if they tortured you. Well, what? I, sure. <laughs> I think uh, that would depend entirely. I think it if it involved you, Suna and uh, Aura, well, I, I take that with me to the grave. I'm just giving you shit. And I take out a vial of poison and uh, a rag and I sit down and I start, uh, I take some of my dagger, uh, two of my daggers and I start trying to coat it because now I can poison my daggers. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Speaking of daggers, a dagger presses itself to the side of your neck, Bo. <laughs> Behind Bo, you see a very classic looking kind of ninja assassin looking fellow, Ellie. Behind Bo. Um, you know him as, as Clay um, or The Bug. Clay the Bug. Um, you know him as Clay. Anyone else would know him as The Bug. Um, he's, a, he's a human. Um, he's in his 20s. He's quite short. He's um, he's got one eye that's slightly bigger than the other. Um, he has a mask that's pulled up over his nose. Um, he's in the Assassin's Guild clothing. Um, he's got quite short hair, but he does have like a, uh, a long um, uh, top knot kind of. Um, but the rest is all shaved around it. Um, and uh, you know him to be quite adequate in general. Not the best, not the worst. Um, he seems... To you to be better at gathering information than just outright combat and actual assassinations and stuff he's not necessarily failed at things but he's not um always put on the the top jobs but again he's also kind of newish to solo work and um he appears behind you Bo, with a knife to your neck um and then his face appears around the side of of Bo. And well, says to you, hey, Ellie, yeah. so this is the one. I, what? The one? Wait, one? Mm -hmm. no, what? I am confused. I, I, I immediately turn to Ellie and throw my brows at her. What is he talking about? You can put the dagger away. It's fine. All it's right. harmless. What are Been you doing too here? too long. Bo, this is Bug. Bug, this is Bo. I look him up and down, and I realize he's, he's quite the small fella. Of course, obviously, I keep that remark to myself. I uh, just give him a wave. <laughs> Hi. I've got the my one. eyes on you. Uh, 
What do you mean the one? <laughs> I'm uh, the... following you around. Yeah, you're not following us around because of him. You're following us around because the Inquisition might be tailing us, and we need you to find that out. Huh. Inquisition. Look, if you want a piece of this ass first, you, you gotta take me on a date first, all right, pal? Yeah, and he's missing half of it, so... All right, let's not talk about that. Huh. So we're just letting anybody in. He's not a part... Of... I need him. Huh. We're not just letting anybody in. I need him. Big man Don't worry. said there was three. You, this one. Uh, one went to send a message. The other one's probably drunk and passed out somewhere. At the bar, probably. Right. So, don't worry. We'll be out of everybody's hair in a little bit. Okay. I'll Once be we on stop being Aaron boys. He starts walking outside. Because he'll Wait, be on the roof. where are you going? No, come back. Hey, wait, one more question. What? I didn't say you could leave. I, I know. I mean... You, uh, I don't know. You might want to talk to Zach about that. But uh, do you know anything about a Dr. Panu? Piri Panu? Name. He, he hangs out at uh, Moranas. Don't know the doctor. Into Moranas. You, know you don't know what the place is either? Yeah. Shithole. Oh, well. Great. What kind of people hang out there besides... Normies. Doctors. It's gonna be fun. Okay, thanks for the help. Yeah, I'll be on the roof. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. <laughs> Try not to fall off the roof. There's no magic. We can't save you. He uh, heads out. <sighs> well then, uh, I say why. Well, maybe Zach looks for some information. We can uh, go check out this place. Well, well, we'll wait for her to get back, but well, um, we can just go outside to her. True. True. And uh, yeah, I'll stow away the daggers, and then I'll take—I don't know—I'll go up to a table, grab some uh, parchment and a pen, and and write a note to Zach saying that we've went to check out Morana's and to not let Kalugi leave the bar. <laughs> okay. So you guys um head up and outside, and. Aura is nowhere to be seen. We're going to flip over to where Aura is and find out. Luckily, I'm prepared for this. Because we've had solo Aura time before. The um, figure of Aura lets Buns go. Buns flutters off in the direction of Bame. And then what do you do? Outside. I look around very quickly and kind of get my sense of direction and then remember passing. It's Marana's, right? The yeah. bar name. Mm -hmm. I remember a flicker of it when Nine Lives and I were coming into town and I just take off running towards the bar. All right. You um, take off running. I'm just going to roll one dice here for Clay the Bug to see if he catches this or not. Okay. And, um, yeah, you start heading away. Moving through town after a week um, since the fall of magic is a little easier. Um, there's no snow anymore. The streets have cleared up. Um, and uh, you start pretty much just heading down the main street. It takes you from um, where you are in the midtown um, all the way down um, towards where the edge of the walls are in Alona's low town and you peel off from the um main street um and follow the route in until you come to the area where you saw this this tavern um it's it's a semi-residential area. There's more like market stalls and stuff, but there are taverns every other corner in Bologna. Um, when you kind of look around, it takes you a moment to retrace your steps fully before you uh, find this little tavern. It's kind of um, a thin house. It's almost, it almost looks like a tower. It's like that thin, but it's it's terraced in with a bunch of other buildings. There are like shuttered windows. Um, 
you just go straight in you can see that it says morana's outside on the on the door frame old looking is there anybody outside there are people all over the place you're in a big city but it there's not anyone like standing outside no is there a certain clientele that i'm noticing before i go in mm, roll me a dice Like, regular group of folks, right? No idea okay. what you're, yeah, walking into. Okay. Um, I'm also, I'm just running at full speed, and I, I slow down before I get to it, so I, I'm out of breath, and I'm just looking, and then I, I'm just going to head straight for the door and not even notice what kind of people are outside, so I'm just going to go right inside. Yeah. You head on in. Um, When you move in, you... Really what you see is just kind of your average working folk sitting around for the most part. Um, it's relatively early in the day, so it wouldn't be like packed out. Um, but also a lot of businesses are, are out of action right now. So the taverns are a little more busy than they were. Some people are staying at taverns and inns and stuff because their houses have suffered some sort of damage or been entirely destroyed. So people are displaced. Um, there are several tables on one half of this tavern that look like poker tables um, or blackjack tables or something like that. It seems to sort of double up as a um, just a place that people would come to play cards. Um, then the closer half, the half that you kind of walk into just appears to be anything uh, like a normal tavern. There is a, a stairway that heads upstairs, but it's like kind of barred off just by a plank of wood, suggesting probably that the owner lives upstairs. Um, and really it's just one small um, very small tavern. You um, walk in, the, the patrons inside don't really react. Um, on the left-hand wall, as you walk in, there's a relatively small bar. Um, there's a crossbow, big-looking heavy crossbow sat on the counter. And beyond that, there is a um, quite stout and tough-looking dwarven woman red braided hair um a greasy gown she's got uh legs up on the bar she's got one hand on the crossbow and the other um drinking from a mug of what's probably some sort of dwarven ale um she is like the only person looking at you when you walk in she gives you a kind of um a, ki a look she gives you a look that you see with your own eyes i won't i don't know if you want to roll to determine what that might B. I would like to roll to see if I can interpret her intent with her look. You may. If it's for friendly or aggressive. Eleven. Eleven is a pass. You just get the sense that she recognizes that you're not a regular. When I walk in, I probably notice as well that people look more grungy than I do. They They just look like what would most likely be the working folk from the immediate area. It's a local bar, really. Um, so it's probably just the residents of this part of town. Nobody looks necessarily one way or another. No, it doesn't look like a banditry bar. It, you know, there's a, a, a sense of um, just a, a local pub feeling. It doesn't, I don't think you're overwhelmed with fear by walking in necessarily. I'm going to go up to the bar and order a drink. You head up, the um, woman gives you a side glance and then n nods. You're new in town. Yeah, I, I came um, from from up north. I, I, I just uh, wanted to, to visit some friends and make sure they were okay. Up north? Not much up north. I'm from BAME. Oh, I, I knew a fella from BAME. What's his name? Oh. Mal Malky. Malky. Milky. Milky. Malky. You know Malky? Mal Malky? Um, do I know Malky? <laughs> Roll a dice. Thirteen? You do not. I can't say uh, Malky rings a bell, but um, there, there's, our, there's several Malkies. Is, is there a last name that goes with that? Oh, aye, you're not too old, are you, Ween? You're probably, what, 
40. I'm 31. Okay, Wayne, you're a baby. So maybe at, maybe Malky was before my time? That oh, could, that, that was a... about 200 years ago. Oh, yeah, then I probably have not met And he Malky. moved from there to here? No, I, I, did, I, I still live up there. I, ju I just came down here to, to check on some friends and... Um, oh, you got I, friends? I, Who's your friend? Um, I, I haven't really been able to locate them. All right, that's below a stout. She pushes a kind of dirty-looking wooden mug towards you, but inside is some golden-looking liquid, lightly carbonated. Ooh. Ooh, that's got a bite to it. Hey, a special, that. Last of the keg. Oh, it's very rich. Hmm. Thank you, thank you. Um, I actually, I also came for a babe. I, I have some friends back home that aren't doing so well, so our doctor recently passed, so I'm looking for another doctor who might be able to help. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. is that one? You're looking for a doctor here? Yeah, I, I mean, Malona would have the best, right? And, and one oh, of my aye, close aye, friends aye. is not doing very good, so I thought, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. You think you're going to get a doctor to come with you up to the sticks? Have you seen it outside? I didn't know it was this bad. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Everybody in here's got bruises. Look at him. Look at his wee legs. Look, trapped under a beam, weren't you? Trapped under a beam. I was trapped under a beam. Oh, are you okay? Uh, well... I hope so. I think so. I can walk. That's good. I mean, the bruises, normally, like, I... A couple of weeks, if it's just bruising, you should be fine. Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't need them anyway. I do work. Oh. I work plenty, all right? I just don't, I'm out of luck with work at the moment. You're not out of luck. You're a lazy bastard. What kind of work do you do? I'll do anything, mate. What do you need? You need lifting? I do lifting. Are you a doctor? Doctor? No, I can't read. Oh, okay. I'll keep you in mind for other jobs, though. And I turn back to her. <laughs> so, um, do you know any doctors that might uh, be interested in coming up north with me? Any doctors? You see doctors come and go. No, plenty of doctors coming in now. You should probably go see, um, some, someone on the government. Like, who's in charge of the doctors? I don't know. I don't know who is in charge of the doctors. They just do their own thing, do they? I don't know. It's pity. You won't get Piri to work. Piri's, uh, Piri ain't gonna do nothing for you, mate. Hey, I only know one doctor. His name's Piri. P Perry? I know him Piri for years. Fixed up my leg. Had a bum knee. Uh, is that the same? That's the same doctor that Reginald wants us to find, correct, Brad? I would assume so. Okay. Considering that Piri is not a common name. Is, uh, is he here right now? Can I, I talk help to him? help my old man. old man had the red cough. If I had the red oh. cough. How, how is he now? Oh, he's long dead. Not from oh. the red cough. Perry did that. Okay. Is is Perry here? He sounds he sounds perfect. Hey, Perry. Um, well, if you, let's see, Perry. Where's Perry going to be now? He comes in here sometimes. You're not after him for money. He's good for money. Don't rough him up. You know, we need our doctors. No, of course. I would never rough him up. I mean, do I look like I the type that would rough somebody up? I don't know. Lass. You got a big sword on your back walking around. Middle of the uh, crises. Yeah, it's it, my dad taught me how to use this. And so I, um, it's like a blanket when you're a kid. I just take it everywhere with me. It, it's like a security That's a big blanket. sword. That's a, like, when do you want something a little smaller? You're traveling all this way. That looks heavy. Yeah, there was on the road though. There were there was some some robbers, and it's just it's kind of like a protection thing too. Hmm. Right. I see. You can handle yourself, then. I think I can, but then sometimes I think that I can't. If I'm being right. honest. Uh, well, you made it here. You know, barely a scratch on you. Yeah, I, I when when I say it and think about it now. I met a nice man on the road, and he let me ride with him the whole way, but I didn't really know him, and now I just, I guess that is... I guess... I'm here. 
Aye. Alright, well, Terry lives up in Midtown, no, you'll have to go up to his house. Okay. Mid Midtown. Midtown. Um, um, I grab a little piece of paper out of my pocket and I write it down. Do, do you have his address? Hey, well, uh, you go up to the front of that. There's a big bell tower by the bridge. Right? Okay. A big bridge. And there's a little red brick house in front of that there bell tower. That's his house. Oh, it's the top floor. I've not okay. been there in a while. He might have moved. Has he been here recently? I haven't seen him in weeks. Oh. Okay. Um, well, I could check his house. Is he married or anything? Or does he have, like... No. You know, he comes in here. He comes and goes. I've never seen him with a woman. Near a man. Oh, he keeps himself to himself. Okay. Sometimes that's kind of nice, right? Hey, I mean... Um... I've not seen my husband in a long time. He's long gone in the ground. I'm sorry. Hey, so it's, yeah, it's nice. In its own way. It's, yeah. Sometimes I feel like you just... If you only depend on yourself, then you can never be disappointed, right? I suppose that's one way to look at it. But it's not nearly as fun. Right. Or fulfilling. Okay. I should probably go. Um, thank you for this uh, lovely beer. Is it be is it mead? She, she leans forward and says, "Are you in trouble, lass? You need some help." No, I'm just worried about my friends. You sure? I got some friends of my own. See you on your way. No, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I I you've been so nice. You know, sometimes you come into taverns. I, there was one time I went into a tavern here, and then the guy tried to cut my head off. Oh, hey, that happens. Yeah, it's not too bad here. Sometimes somebody would try and cut your head off. That's why I keep one hand here on this. Yeah, th I mean, that's another reason why I carry this. But where I come from, like, you might get a weird look, or someone might just give you the stank face. But for the most part, like, I don't have to worry about that. Hey, yeah, that's probably everybody knows everybody, though, in BIM. So like yeah, you go chopping someone's head off, they'll find you straight away. Up here, I chop off his head. Nobody's gonna miss you. Nobody's gonna miss you, mate. Nobody's gonna miss you. I chop off your head. You wouldn't chop off my head. You wouldn't stand a chance, me and you, outside. I'm sorry, lass. Yeah. So you don't need any help. I don't know what kind of help you okay, could you're offer. Not being, without... You're not being chased down, no. No, I think I'm just hurrying. So Alright, that that'll be fix... two copper pieces then. Before you go running off. No, of course. I take out uh, one of my few gold pieces that Clex gave me and I just slide it over. You can keep the change. Would... Keep the change? Yeah. Didn't they know we had a noble? Don't be flashing all I'm, that I'm, gold. I'm... No, well, that's why I slid it over to you very conspicuously. Hey, yeah, hey, you want to be careful walking around gold pieces like that. You should go get an exchange. That's my last one. Oh, well, then you better take your change. Here you go. Let me get you some silver. No, no, no. Here. I want you to have it because, I don't know, maybe something will start. All right, don't need to twist my ear. I'm sorry about your husband. And I set the drink down and I stand up and smooth out my coat, overcoat. All right. Don't fight. I turn to the guy with the bruised legs. Don't fight her because your legs are hurt and you, you never not quite know when a sword might come for your neck. Okay? Yeah, I ain't gonna fight no one, really. That's good. I just... You just don't wanna... I just wouldn't even joke about that. And then I turn around and I walk out the, the front yeah, door. Right. What a freak. Anyway, as I was saying, um, Bo and Ellie, what are you doing? I mean... Ellie would have went. What I would have set out to do what Ellie planned to do: go to Marana's. Because if Aura's not there and I didn't see her on the way out, I'd be like, okay, well maybe she went after Reginald. All right. <laughs> Which is what I actually thought. Uh, yeah. Aura, roll me a dice. You two, roll me a dice. Uh, let me scroll up. Ten, fifteen, and twelve for both. Ten, fifteen. What was Aura's? Yours is the 10 and yours is the 12 and the 15. Are you moving yeah. quite quickly there? 
Because she sprinted. I'd say Ellie moves pretty quickly, especially through a crowd of chaos. Are you sprinting oh. full pelt or? Like a, a fast walk. Like oh. she's not going to be oh. one of those like, let me just take off running because that would be too obvious. She's going to do a, a, one of those like fast walks. All right. Oh. Let's That's see. a fast walk. I'm, I'm just trying to catch up. I'm going to roll the dice. And if I roll, uh, I roll above a 10, you're going to bump into each other. Ding! As you are moving down the street, Ellie, um, you spot, um, walking towards you, the, the, probably the top of, uh, Aura's sword, like the tip over the crowd, moving, um, before Aura's looking kind of down at a, uh, piece of paper, Trying to figure out where the main bridge would be. She looks left, sees the canal, and starts to follow the canal. The two of you see her move off in a different direction, and she's gone. I would start to follow her. I wouldn't say anything, though. I would just start to quietly follow her. And I would look at Bo and go... I, I, I give her a nod, and I, I stay quiet. And I, I think I would whisper to Bo also, like... She's going off without us. I don't trust her. And I would just keep moving. Okay. So, you two following Aura. Aura, you uh, come to the area. Actually, roll me a dice. Let's see if you do find it. You're not from Bologna. Sorry. I keep thinking. Oh, you know exactly where it is. It's actually very near to where the um, so temple of Auril was. The temple where you ended up fighting with Igan. Um... And uh, there's a huge bridge that runs across one of the widest points of the river that's in town. Um, before you come to it, you recognize one of the bell towers. This is somewhat of a, a sort of the religious quarter. There's lots of temples and stuff around here. Um, and there's a huge bell tower. Before you actually step onto the bridge on the main street, you can see uh, across from there, there's a relatively small set of buildings um, one of them being red brick, um, maybe two or three levels to it, um, and a stairwell that leads up the sides. Um, you heading straight on up? I mean, I'd probably look behind me and look around to see, because Elliot said something about people tailing us, potentially. Okay. Everyone roll, including, I guess, the bug. Um, Bo and Ellie, um, you're all successful. I don't really know how contested roles work in this, so I'm going to make up a rule on the spot. Success is that you accomplish what you're trying to do without any compromises. Um, well, can I say what I think Ellie would do? Like, at a point, she would, I'm not going to announce myself, but she's not going to hide from her either. Like, if she turns around and sees Ellie, Ellie's just going to get, a, you know, just going to wave. I would say that you probably see each other, unless... I yeah. feel like if Ellie wants to hide, it's, it, it, she would win. She can hide. Um, maybe not the same for Bo, but with Ellie's pointers. I don't think anybody sees the bug um, around here. Um, but yeah, I want it to as be a you... creepy anime scene where you see Bo and then Ellie steps out from behind him and just like does not look very happy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I think as you uh, as you arrive at your destination, you turn around, you see these to um, walk in up behind you. Okay, good. I found the address. Uh, I guess he lives over there. Well, you guess he lives over there. You're just going to go get him without us and bring him back, right? Well, I don't have time to deal with your dad, so I got other things. He's to not my dad, first of all. And second of all, you know, I thought we were a team, but now I see okay. you just want to do things on your own terms Wait, and not have dude, our help. I don't know what your problem is, Ellie. You are running the show or think that you are. There's... Uh, I beg to differ. You're the one running off and doing whatever you want and not including either of us. I thought we were a team, but no, you just gonna run off. I don't feel like and... I am part of a team right now. I you're feel not like... because you're acting on your own. I start, I head right up the stairs. This has to do with. This has God. to do with what? With Alvin that I offered to help? Is that it? Because that doesn't count. It, it has to be. 
You're not part of the team and neither am I, apparently. We, we can't let her do this alone. I, I give a signal that an assassin, if he's around, would recognize, but that basically says, like, we're going in and, like, stay here. Yeah. So keep watch or whatever. Yeah. Aura leads the way up the stairs, heads up towards a, um, just a, a standard looking door, wooden door, um, painted, uh, kind of a lightish blue color, but all the paint is faded and peeled off. Um, you can see that there are windows, but it's kind of hard to work out what's going on from here because the um, it's the top floor. There are three doors that you um, walk past, with the third being the top floor. Um, it's kind of a maisonette that's been split in a way, but it's also quite small. You get the sense that um, this is probably where a building where where small folk live, probably gnomes, halflings, um, take residence in this building. Um, the door is about as tall as you are. I think you're like the high five foot tall area. Um, so you would have to duck down slightly to get in. Um, approaching the door, it just is, appears to be closed, locked, windows closed. Kind of hard to make out anything once you approach it first. Is there any cant? Thieves can't or anything anywhere? Nothing on the doorway. No. Okay. Just seems pretty normal. Standard front door for a Bologna homestead. I would so, probably try to push beside Aura and put my ear to it. See if I can hear anything inside. Roll me a dice. Eleven. No obvious sounds coming from inside. As soon as she takes her ear up, I'm going to knock on the door. There's a rap. Maybe you wait a moment. No response. Hello? Doctor? I'm going to try and lockpick it. Yeah, no response. Uh, roll me a dice, Ellie. 18. Yeah, easy lock. No problems whatsoever. Takes you like less than a minute. And then the of the lock unhitching. I open it, hold it out to Orin, say, after you, your highness. All right, come on, let's, uh, please, ladies. I, I look at her <laughs> and just go, if you want to be passive aggressive about all of this, that's fine. And I just walk past her. And oh, I, I don't in. think I was being passive. Okay, aggressive. I mean, but that's your normal <laughs> mode anyway. And so I start Apparently searching. it's yours now too. We get along great in the past. <laughs> Poor Bo. <laughs> We're so no. And I, I start, I ignore her last comment and I just start searching around the apartment because I am feeling like we're going to find a dead body. Does it smell? It doesn't smell. Um, oh, thank God. You walk in to Professor Peary's house. Um, you enter and you see three kind of open plan rooms. Um, there's a bedroom on one side that has a small bed fitting a uh, halfling body, maybe some clothing, not a huge amount, but like, it seems like he has um, nice stuff in here. This isn't necessarily like a peasant's hovel, um, but it also isn't like filled with gold or anything like that. He probably makes good money being a doctor, but nothing, he doesn't seem to be into to too much flashy things, that being said. Um, he does have some decent clothing, multiple sets of clothing, which is also a thing. Um, there's a main room with a with a kitchenette to one side, a table with all the bowls and plates that are tidied away. Um, it's quite clean in here, tidy. Um, there is another room that looks like a medical kind of office. There's a bed with a side table. Um, it looks like it's likely for um, patient visits and not like a spare room. Um, at the back of the central room, kind of directly ahead of you as you step in, there's a desk in between two bookcases. The desk is in disarray, and the bookshelves are overflowing with books. They're piled up on the floor in front of it. Um, as you guys start moving through, there's no dead body. There's no um, no re like blood or anything crazy. You don't find a finger or anything like that, but there, it, it just looks like an empty house, like no one's been home for a little while. Um, the, uh, 
only real kind of area that looks kind of messy is the desk, but it doesn't look like it's been like um, robbed. You know, it just looks like it's just the the area of the house that is used the most. I'd like um, to use an ability. Yeah. Curious case. Hmm. And I want to say Ellie uses this because this isn't the first time she's had to go into someone's home to find information so she could locate them and kidnap or kill them. Um, so this would remind her of several times. And basically what it is is I spend three points and then I discover either the motive of the person of the scene, the nearby location of a hidden message symbol or other detail that reveals uh, some sort of affiliation about the scene or uh, where someone who was involved in the scene might have been headed next. Um, Can I use that here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you guys start looking around. I think um, several um, filthy looks between Aura and Ellie, Bo kind of awkwardly shuffling around. It's Maybe really just, like a dad and two daughters right He, now. he picks up a plate and, it, mm, and puts it down. He's clearly slightly distracted while the two of you are fervently looking about. Um... Eventually, the two of you maybe come to the desk, shoving each other out of the way, partially looking over the books. Um, Aura maybe looks over the books since you're a librarian child. Um, and uh, Ellie starts looking over the things on the desk. Um, the books concern themselves with, like, science, the science of medicine. Um, s some alchemy. Um, tinkering, even, which is, like, more mechanical, but it it seems to be needles and things like that. How to make a, one of those horrible Victorian-looking terrifying needles. Um, the Science of Healing Magics, um, which is a book that you actually maybe have seen recently since you guys were doing a bunch of research into that. Um, there is uh, books on disease and various common sicknesses and things like that. Um, on the actual desk, in amongst a lot of paperwork and other books and um uh notes scribbled in doctor's hand um ellie you find uh, a kind of an old looking diary quite an old looking book but a thick one with filled with appointments as you start flicking through it you can see there are a bunch of appointments um that he keeps it seems to be more um appointments of him going out um the final appointment is on the morning of the fall of magic um, which is a home visit to a Mrs. Zevon. And I will write that in the uh, group chat. Um, with an address next to it that takes you a little further into Midtown, which is a place that you and Bo would know, um, essentially over the bridge um, to a street known as Oath Street. Um, and... Hmm... Yeah, I think probably that. Oh, also, the in the diary, the address of his home is different. It has his name written in it, but it says that his home is on the edge of Lowtown, um, on the crossroads of John and Edmonton Street. But that also probably stands out to you as odd. Um, this, is, this is not his address. I look back at Bone, I'm like, did you find anything? I, uh, uh, no. Nothing that stands out. I'm gonna tuck the, uh, I'm gonna obviously try to turn away and just tuck the diary in, and then keep looking around. Do I notice, because I'm watching her like a hawk, do I see her tuck it? I don't see why you wouldn't. I, not even if I turn away and she's looking at a book? Oh, you wait till she's not looking? Yeah. And then steal the book? Because if we're, if we're all looking at stuff, I'm totally going to try and, and jack the book. Then, the diary. Yeah, I, I doubt you would see it. Sorry. So. She's then, sort of actively stealing it, and she's a, you know, she's a rogue. She waits while you pour over a book. And can I, can I and... make an, can I make uh, this as a, especially after reading that this isn't the address, uh, or I don't think this is the address. What could it be, uh, looking around? Can this look like it's not a primary residence? Like this is just a getaway place of some sort. Cause I mean, that is something that criminals do have. Like yeah, their it, hideout. It really does look like, um, a primary residence where he probably lives. 
Yeah. Okay. You get the okay. sense that it is lived in. Okay. Wasn't this guy human though? And you said it looks like he's he's like a halfling. gnomish clothes? No, they oh, he's a halfling. Yep, he's Why a I think he was blonde human? halfling with like mutton chops. Um Wait, so I turned or I was like, if if this guy is a halfling and your friend is a halfling, do you think the same thing could be happening to this guy? Alvin's a gnome. Oh, he's a gnome. This guy's a half. I'll have to learn the difference later. And then... Yeah. I don't think I'd say anything else. I'd look out around for a med kit, though. Oh, yeah, you can actually find a bunch of stuff like that. Um, I'm going to so take back any, like, medical supplies or anything, honestly. So... Yeah, you'll you'll find a a bunch of like um, uh, medicines and tinctures and salves. Um, I don't know if you I, know I what they do. I would point to it and, and look at Aura and uh, oh, I would have no idea. But I'd look at Aura and say, do any of these look helpful? Um, I don't know anything about medicine. I mean, I pick one up. And I put it back down. I just have no idea. You can roll. Because it's not poison. You know, it's not something I would deal with. Bo might know too, and I'll go over and I'll search the shelves and does anything look like it would be beneficial? Yeah, you can roll if you want to work it out. I'll roll as well. I'd say it's less about your skill than that they are mostly kind of unlabeled. Like, he knows what they are. You know what I mean? Like, he just grabs this ball and, and, and then this salve and that thing and, you know. Um, there's probably things that you do recognize as useful that, um, like, bandages and stuff like that. It really is traditional medicine and stuff like that. There is um, some very simplistic looking surgical tools, but he's not really a surgeon. It's just things like those little um, tongs, whatever they're called, that surgeons pull bullets out with, stuff like that. A couple of scalpels. Um... Really, most of the um, alchemical things are unlabeled. There are a few there that look like they might be the classic healing potions, but it's kind of hard to tell. And in most people's history of getting healing potions wrong with something else, it usually has dire consequences, which range from diarrhea all the way up to you've transformed yourself into a bowling ball for 24 hours. Um, so it's, yeah, there's, there's a couple of different potions and things but everything i would say everything's kind of unlabeled and even the, and the things that are labeled are maybe labeled in like weird ways like it, it you know he just called one of them's just called boom juice you know something like that does he have a recipe book like where he writes down what he puts in these mm, let's see um he probably does but you don't see one i would i would try to start looking for one then because i would have no idea and looking at this stuff isn't going to help me so i'd try to find a book yeah, you that can all roll one more time. Look around okay. for the for a deeper look. Seven. Ooh, fifteen. Gonna roll, Laura? Or are you out? Sure. Are you left. No, I I was thinking about what I'd be doing. Um All of you don't really find anything else. Um it's hmm. you come to the decision that it's more likely he probably has like a doctor's go bag. And everything of use that he might need is in that. Maybe even including things like a um, a recipe book. But from what people are saying, he's kind of a genius doctor. So maybe he doesn't need a recipe book or anything like that. Um, if he's researching things, then it might be in one of these um, bookshelves. But then that's you doing research as well, which isn't really a five-minute task. I think I would take some of the stuff that looked a little more intuitive and not as intense. Like if I swat, like if I took it, I might get diarrhea. Like I think I take the stuff that looks like okay. Well, we could use like these bandages and da da da. Yeah. So you um, um I would try to. I'm sure he has a bag somewhere, so I would try to put him in that. Well, with the uh, system in your inventory, you can only have twelve items, so you can switch and swap what you need to switch and swap. Um, oh, you I, can I can't take, carry a bag. You can take two vials. Okay. Of maybe ocean if you want to write that in what about i think bandages? everything else just you can take bandages <laughs> yeah i think you can take bandages i'm gonna take um, bandages because i'm not gonna swallow something where i have no idea what it does right <laughs> um 
But everything else is just kind of like a, a specialist's tool. In the same way you have thieves' tools, you would need some sort of proficiency with this stuff really to use it. Um, okay. And it's it's probably more likely to do more damage than good in a dire situation. Um, Bo being a relatively competent um, healer um, has all the stuff he needs, so it's not really like you would need it. You're a death dealer and not a healer. Um, was there anyone else at Morana's? Who did you talk to? I talked to the bartender. Was there no one, no one shady looking maybe in there to talk to? Why would I look, uh, talk to someone shady if we're looking for the doctor? Because doctors often deal with shady people as well. I mean, the Inquisition's looking for him. They obviously know him. They want his help. Well, I found his house and got it fairly yeah. quickly. And there's just a man with very bruised legs and a woman with a with a bow. She had her feet on the bar, which is very unsanitary. She had a, a bow and her feet on the bar. Yeah. Oh, technically a forge is looking for... It's even scarier. Um, hmm. They were very nice in there. I'd go back. But I found this place, and apparently he's not here. He could be out on a call, though. I mean, that's... Look what's happening out there. And you saw two people that one looked injured, and... I mean, if we just walk around, we'll find injured people everywhere after what happened a couple a few days ago. So... Does the place look lived in, Brad? Like, does, is there's dust? It does, but um, you get the sense that nobody's been here for a few days, maybe a week. And the fact that he has um, the last appointment written into a diary. Actually, you don't know this. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. Um, so, yeah, you get that much. I mean, uh, to the same point, the last appointment was a week ago. It's been exactly seven days. This being day seven. Clear that he has not, and I, I take my finger and swipe on a table. He has not been here in a while. There's just dust caked on my fingers. So, I don't know. Or to take care of the place. Eh. Doctors are usually there. I mean, for the most part, they try to be clean. Also, this kind of mm -hmm. dust. I mean, look at how used some of these places are. It, it wouldn't be like a perfect layer of dust on a table yeah it's kind of gross so my thought is he probably maybe he died when something maybe a or beam fell on him i think uh does he have any neighbors uh well there are two um floors below him that uh -huh. have doors that you walked past to come up here yeah, I think um, I'd walk out, and because I, I mean, I, I, I've looked it over. I found something viable, but I'm gonna go talk to his neighbors if he has, if they're home. As she's if I go down one floor, as she's walking out, I'll be like, "Did you find anything?" He has neighbors, maybe. I don't know. Did you hear? I didn't hear him. <laughs> so. Uh, you going to the floor below? Yeah, I'm gonna go to the floor below and, and bang on the door. Uh, let's see if someone's home. Mm hmm. No response. As I'm doing this, I'm gonna open. What? Well, am I being followed? Are you guys following me? I'd probably head out and I'd, I'd look at Bo as we head down the stairs. It wasn't anything personal. I just was trying to expedite some of this. Before we leave, I'm gonna grab uh, two of those, maybe. Um, potions. <laughs> I, uh, All right, you have two, two times of maybe, potions. maybe potions yeah. in your pocket. Yep. Um, I'm yeah. gonna go down to the the next floor then and bang on that one, the button, the bottom one. There's a moment, and then you hear some noise, and then the door opens. Um, before you is a very thin-looking gnomish gentleman he's maybe three foot tall um he has a very long uh, white beard that comes down to a point um near his navel um a bald head 
kind of long pointy ears, um, relatively droopy eyes. He's a little, um, he looks a little malnourished and his clothing is kind of moth eaten, but his house behind him as he opens the door is um, relatively decent. There's some like nice looking stuff in there, like well-made furniture. Um, you can, you get this a smell of um, something odd cooking in there, um, food possibly, but it smells kind of sour. Um, as you uh, knock on the door, he swings it open, looks up at you, and I think immediately takes in just how you're dressed, because it's always just immediately intimidating. intimidating. <laughs> um, he sees an old man walking down behind you, and then a tiefling with a gigantic sword on her back, and he says, I don't have your money. But then, come on, get away from me. I told you one more week. How am I supposed to get your money when there's all this happening out there? Come on now. I crouch down and I'm like, who who do you owe money? No one. I don't owe nobody money. I was testing you. How can I help you today? Well, we're not here to take your money. We're here to find out about your uh, two floors up. A man that lives there? Yeah, the good doctor. Do you know anything about where he's been? Where he's been? There's a doctor that goes everywhere. Yeah, well, seems a lot of people are looking for him right now that need help and no one can find him. I've been bloody looking for him for a week. I feel like shit. You feel like shit, huh? How do you feel? I feel like somebody took out my stomach and then put it in upside down. I look back at Aura. Told you. Well, do you think a doctor could help you feel better? Well, are you gonna make me feel better? Come on I'm in. Not gonna, I'm not a doctor. Do I look like I'm a doctor? Hey, you can make me feel better in other words if you want. I crouch down. Excuse me, um, do you think Dr. Perry could make you feel better? Well, I don't know. If I knew that, I'd be a doctor, wouldn't I? I, I mean, I guess, I guess you live near him and have experience with him and seen what he does. Do you think that he could help you right now? Well, he's a doctor and I feel like shit, so I'm gonna say yeah. Are you feeling worse or better? Hmm. Are you a doctor? In a way. He knows a little bit about medicine. Oh, well then I'll tell you this. I feel a little better, but it's not great. I feel like, uh... I feel like somebody took out all my blood, and then I mixed it around, and then I put it back in me. Okay, but you, you're not you're not you're not feeling worse than you were, say a week ago. Oh shit! I couldn't walk for two days. Okay, well that's a good sign. Then you can walk now, and you can, yeah, I can do hit more on than people. That. You can do more than. Yeah, you're you gonna start owing me money them. if you keep up. Hey now, I'm paying you. I stand back up and I just turn around and look at the floor. I, I'm trying not to laugh in front of um, everybody. Listen, I am picky. You can come in, Tiefling. Okay, um, well, I'm not here to do I'm that. I'm not here to sleep with you. Well, I might be dead in a few days, the way I feel. Man's got to all... try. You're not going to use pity to get... Either of us, or or him, and I point to Bo in bed I, with I, you. I, I don't even think. I, 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 uh. He's, you know, but out of all of us, he's the least picky. Hey, I think not. It's okay. Listen, you find that doctor. You uh, you send him on home, okay? We'll we'll do that. All right. Uh, you didn't see me, okay? As well, anybody asks you about. Wait, you if you owe someone it? money, how do you have money to pay for other activities? Hey, yeah. listen, that's why you gotta keep quiet. Keep a few coins under the mattress. What I mean? Can I, can I investigate? <laughs> can I, like, look past him and tell anything about, like, maybe his lifestyle or you if he's involved in some gang? roll me uh, dice. Bo gets plus five to whatever he rolls. Eleven. That's only a Damn. nine. Never That's mind. Still pathetic. <laughs> uh, eleven, nine, nine. Um, 
The only thing you get the sense of here, Ellie, um, is that he's he's for sure doing something illegal in there. It's kind of hard to tell what he's up to. He could be anything. He could be a fence. Yeah. He could be, you know, selling some sort of illegal drugs or... There's no real way to tell just from this, but he's probably... He's for sure a criminal in some way. Bo, you also get the sixth sense for sure that this guy is some sort of criminal. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, what. just no idea what he's doing. Yeah, he's up to something like most we're, people we're are. We're criminals and we can sense that he's a criminal. Yeah, I mean, you guys have a sixth sense, especially Bo. Bo's like got all these criminal contacts and stuff throughout town. Yeah. All right, well, you have a good day. And maybe next time, don't open the door for just anyone. Oh, Make a little hole on so you can, like, look out. Oh, yeah, you keep the freaky around. in there, okay? Don't don't let it come out. I, 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 I ain't doing nothing over here, okay? Everything above board. All right, I'll take your word for it. And I get up and I walk away. All right, come on back whenever you want. Slams the door. Is he a prostitute? You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he is selling himself. Wait, no. but he was he willing was to pay saying, us, yeah, though. Yeah, that, yeah. He's not a, that makes us the prostitute if he's willing to pay us and we sleep with him. Is he just but, like, Yeah, but how else is he making his money? By selling himself. He, he could be making his money by a lot of things. He didn't come off as very, uh, what's the word? I mean, the world's kind of ending, right? He could be making drugs, not the helpful kind. Um, and I <laughs> start to walk out the door. Where are you guys headed um, now? I'm gonna go back to the guild. Uh, I'm. I, I'm oh, I guess I'll turn and tell him. I'm going back to the guild. See if Zach found anything on this doctor that the the fortress is looking for. I. I don't think we should rely on. Um, no offense. We have it's ledgers bad. and stuff that keep track of people whenever we need to know important faces and where to find them for reasons. But Reginald yeah. trusted us, us three, to find this doctor. I yeah, and I don't trust Reginald. And I look at Aura. I don't trust we, Reginald either. We we don't either. But I know Zach. I don't know this Reginald guy, and I definitely don't know the Inquisition well enough to trust any of them with our lives. In fact, uh -huh. I really don't want to step foot back in their place because let's just say that they are not so kind when they they want information as well. So I guess if, if you're talking trust, I don't want to. I don't trust Zach. So as I it goes both either. ways, he, he he'd at least tell me before he stabbed me. So. Well, that doesn't help. It does yeah, a little bit. No, it doesn't. I know you guys don't trust him, but okay, at least we I, have well, a code. Well, did you find anything upstairs? Because I'm not going back to the guild. Did you find anything? Guild. Okay, well then go where you're going to go. I'm going to go back to the guild. Let me know where you're going. I'll come find you. I mean, maybe don't bother. Well, we're really going to be that way. Team. We're supposed to be a team. You're the one that ran off, and you're going to accuse me of not wanting to be a team. We're supposed to be a team. Zach is not a part of our team. He's helping us right now. To you. I have barely spoken to this man, and also- Do you want to speak I... with him? You can come in with us. You could always come in with All us. You I guys know, stay outside. Zach wants me killed. He wants me dead. We'll... Actually, no. He left that up to me, and I was the one that decided if you were going to be dead or not. Wait, what? Yeah. I'm the one that got the letter. It's not Zach that wants you killed. It's the person who hired him, your father, that wanted you killed. And we didn't kill you. We don't call off hits, ever. But we called off yours. So if you want to find your father, we can do that after all this is over, but... I could care less. I, I, I care about you. I care about Aura, Suna, and I care for Alvin. I... It's like you say we're on a team, but you're just, you're saying, oh, we're going back to the guild. Like we're supposed to follow you like lost puppy dogs. I came out here to try to find something. You came out here to out. help your friend and leave us behind. How we need to find out behind? what's going on in the fortress. What's going on there? Why do they need a doctor? Why are they locking up Grimm? Why did Grimm attack it in the first place? He knows something that we don't know. Maybe the person we're looking for is in there. Maybe something's going down. Maybe it's the queen the whole time. I don't give a shit about the queen. I give a shit about Alvin and Suuna and everybody else. Suuna's coming here. She's gonna meet us here. And you're gonna leave. 
I came all this way to meet up with you two, and I've literally been kicking dirt around in the guild. No, it, we were in the Inquisition, but yes. In both places, and I've gotten nowhere. And I'm saying, let's go. Go back to the guild, find out what information we can find, and then go to the fortress. Let's just go. Or I can go. The guild doesn't have anything for me. They have me. me. I know, but your loyalty is to them and not us. You're going to say that after all this. You're going to say yeah. that after sticking with you guys through all this. You're, that's what you're going to say to me. Put yourself in Aura's shoes, though. I am. You've, She's you've... doing what she wants and accusing us of it. It's called projection, and you're doing it right now. I turn around and I walk down the street and I'm oh, gone. Oh, 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 oh. You know where to find me. And I just, I walk towards the guild. What do you got, Bar? I... I guess I'm just very caught up in the moment. I'm, I'm like a deer just transfixed into staring down into head headlights. I... I want to be there for both of them. I do. And I, I, it breaks my heart that they're, they're butting heads like this. I, I understand Aura. I understand Ellie too. I know Ellie has the right intentions by trying to help us. But at the same time, I understand Aura, uh, where she comes from, not trusting the guild. This is, this is tough. Oh God. I think I'm just gonna take a walk by myself. Yeah. Down so, memory. yeah, the three of you split up and head in different directions. Um, however, our camera pans up to the rooftop. On top of the roof, we see Clay the bug um, watching the three of you split up and you can see um, a look of confusion and then he kind of does a like a uh, hands in the air which one am I supposed to follow um, there's a moment where his eyes widen and just as he turns behind him a hand grips his face pulls down his mask another hand with a cloth over his mouth there's a few seconds and a struggle before you see Clay's eyes roll up in the back of his head and he falls kind of slumped to one side you hear a voice say, They trained you well, boy, but I'm damn good too. And that's where we end today's session. Uh, Are you kidding not me? Not bug! Insane! What just happened? Oh my god. He got murgled. I'll be honest, I thought we had another <laughs> hour of the show left, and then I remembered that it's daylight savings, and I, uh... And that's that. Man. <laughs> I thought there was so. I was about to go back to the other crew, and then I realized that it, it ends around now, and it's probably best to uh, pull it there. Drama. Berber. That that voice sounded <laughs> familiar. Should Drama I? Drama banana. Did it sound familiar? Um, <laughs> no. Let's okay, say, let's say yeah. it's a voice we haven't heard yet. It's just that I don't have that many voices off. I was like, I swear episodes. to God, if that's Grim that just killed him. <laughs> it's similar. I just don't have too many. And also, I kind of had to figure out which accent is Balonian somewhat. If I needed to fall back on a just someone from Bologna voice, it's just, you know, gruff London. That's how it, it's just kind of London. Oh, okay. London accent in a kind of Florence looking town in an Italian ish. Um, but not Italy, Alexandria. <laughs> I have to base things in some place to, to anchor myself to GM. And I just don't have that many voices. I am not Frank Stephen. Thank God, am I right? All I don't right. have many voices. <laughs> That's all I got. I try. Um, some of the distinct accents and stuff, I didn't want to, I don't want to make it too crazy. But it, let's just say it was not a voice we've heard before. Let's imagine it's... Uh, but imagine I had lots of voices available to me. Um, theory crafting in the Discord. 
with Piranha Plant tonight, in 10 minutes from now, as is always custom after an episode. Wow. Much drama. We go is to. Is that you or Whack that just redeemed Destroy Brad <laughs> with our own channel points? Why on is the Destroy table Brad account? one now? And why is it so know. much less than Destroy Whack Steve? I have no idea. Is mine? For, <laughs> I think mine's for a penny. If you redeem that. <laughs> Right now, at the end of an episode of something IGM, it's already destroyed. My brain is done. I'm always KO'd by the end of GMing <laughs> for three hours. So that that works out pretty well. Um, It was not me, though. I didn't even know it existed. Let's go to PB for a reaction. For, for, for the episode? Yeah, I just want to see. Oh, oh. Um, well, I type... <laughs> Should I share what I put in our group chat? Because yeah. I feel like I probably should have put it in the... Yeah, I probably should yeah. have put it in the public chat. I apologize. <laughs> I said, what stick is up Ellie's ass? I miss dead Ellie. I said it. Sorry, Pocket. I said it. <laughs> dead Ellie was not going to have you all killed if we succeeded, so... For real? Yep. Even after all dead of Ellie that? Dead Ellie would put a hit out on everybody if we all Well, succeeded. I still miss dead Ellie, because at least I wouldn't have seen it coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, dead Ellie's not going to kill Aura, even if they fight like twins. It's Wait, like, Dead Ellie isn't? I thought you said Dead Ellie was going to... Or Live Ellie, sorry. Oh. I forgot I'm live now. Yes, Live oh, yeah. Ellie's not going to... She's not going to kill or, or any of you guys. She's going to kill for you, but... If I can explain, since it's confusing and, and whatnot, uh, Ellie has changed. In the original world where it was peaceful and the, the apocalypse didn't really happen, it just everyone lost magic and was peaceful, uh... Ellie got to live the life she wanted. She doesn't yeah, get to. Um, I've been wondering if this is kind of like a tantrum that she's sort of like throwing it's, because it's not she really lost a tantrum the, like, so much as like. Well, I mean, tantrum the world's the way different. We she can't do. survive without with chaos going on right now, and the fact that we have to go after this guy and what's going on in the fortress, and you know what is the Inquisition up to, and uh, what's the guild gonna do about it, and then so she's using Zach. She's using him, and he knows that, and he's using her, and I think it's like they've. She's starting to realize, like, maybe I do need him. That that peaceful world is not real. And she's starting to shut that out again like she once did as an assassin. So it's like, I think you kind of see her going back into assassin mode. Yeah, so, and it's, it's But I also... think that's why Aura and Bo are having such a hard time with it, right? Because you're choosing guild over... I wouldn't say I'm choosing us. guild, but I, I have an end goal of getting into the fortress. I don't have an end goal of going to save one person right now. It's like, well, I'm they, getting into the fortress. They have an end goal that's the same, too. It's just you're willing to work with Zach to do it and they don't feel comfortable with that, right? Like that's, that's where that's the divide fine, is, I Ellie's guess. Ellie's going to go work with Zach because they have It's interesting to watch either way. But yeah. also like they don't have a Zach, right? Yeah, they don't. Like if we Bo are each had a Zach. If Bo had yeah. a Zach, maybe you'd be going back and forth with that point of yeah. contact. Or if yeah. Aura had one, maybe you're going back and forth. So from a character perspective, Ellie trusts Zach in the sense of I can mine him for information. Whereas the other two are like, we keep going back to this terrifying guild leader dude who's yeah. like all mixed up That's in politics too, like, as well if if aura had a contact that you guys could go to it certainly wouldn't be the leader of like the assassins you know so i think there's just an element of we automatically don't trust this leader of assassins person <laughs> alien yeah. Hey. yeah and also there's like this whole idea that for you know for 10 weeks it was like ellie's like i'm gonna fucking kill zach and then the, we know as players that in your perfect world you killed him and you got to do and then you cried but in character, we don't know that at all. And suddenly oh, you're just like, buddy, when Bo, buddy, was well, Zach when Bo again, met her, like, the fuck? You, if, if you recall, when Bo and Ellie met up and she was injured and outside the, the guild, she hadn't gone in yet, she was crying because Zach was still alive. No, I know that. So there we was a moment where players, she was upset. They don't know that. Yeah, oh, like we up. as players know that, but the, oh. the characters don't know that. I think, what, what's up? I think my internet's dropping out. Oh, okay. It was be. my pun. It was a pun. Yeah, you ruined Twitch it. Shut us down. <laughs> ruined it. Uh, it just died. Oh, it's come back. Like, we back. It was puns. it was blipping for a second. I like the pity won't get you titty line. Can't yeah. Handle uh, pity titty. <laughs> Wish I would have said that. <laughs> mm, my internet was dropping then, so let's do a round of shout outs before it drops out entirely yeah. yes, yes, yes. and KOs itself. Um, we'll start with Aura, APP. Where uh, can people find you in the week? Um, I'll go fast. And what are you doing? I uh, do... Uh, wow, now that I need to go fast, I can't think. Um, I <laughs> am Katie Peter's Place. I play on Twitch. We've been doing spooky stuff all month. And 
on Twitter at Play Katie Play. And uh, Brad and I are going to play Little Hope on Friday. So you should all come hang out with both of us. And that's me. And I played Aura for you today. Yes, you did. Perfectly in character. And without mother around. Um, you just had the father and the twins. Um, what about you, PB? Hi, I'm Pumpkinberry. And I played Suna for you today. You can find me at Twitch and Twitter at Pumpkinberry. Uh, you can also find me here on Wednesdays, Jamming Gone, our surreal thriller, and then again on Saturdays playing the psychotic and crazy Sophia the Vampire. Yeah, that's it. And I'm playing through the Silent Hill series right now on my channel, so if you want, you can come check that out. Uh, Zagoticus. Hi everyone, I'm Zagoticus on all the places. You can find me, Zagoticus. Uh, you can find me here on Table Story on Tuesdays, where I play Alexander Pepin. A second year Raven, college student at Hogwarts. Uh, that's a whole bunch of fun. You can also check out my podcast, The Zgodcast, where I sit there and have chats with cool people. And uh, I've been playing a bunch of Hades on my stream because I love it. It's got wonderful art and wonderful music and wonderful ready rating and wonderful gameplay mechanics. And lots of people are saying, oh, game of the year candidate and all that. So come check it out and see what you think. I will do just that at twitch.tv forward slash Zakotacost. Uh what about you, Tuesday? I am Tuesday. I'm Tuesday Gray on Twitch and Twitter, and you can find me for now on Saturdays and Sundays on Table Story, Saturdays for Vampires, Sundays for this. Um come watch us be seasick and mystified again next week. Mm-hmm. Um Disby. Hello, I'm Disbiarix. I played Bo Bobo for you today. Uh, you can find me here on Twitch and Twitter at the same handle. Uh, I, I like the spooky games and the roleplay stuff. Yeah, come come hang out. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for the awesome episode today. And poor Bo. Just like, I could, sorry, I just punched the microphone. I could totally see that like end scene in the street where they both split ways and Bo's just like in the middle of the street like, fuck. Yeah, it's 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 hard for him right now. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's awkward. Where do you go? What do you do? You see both sides of the thing. Yeah, you're stuck in the middle. And you're like ah, and they're literally physically walking in two different directions as well. You're like, what do you do? Yeah, like fuck. Um, do do? Yeah. yeah, we'll see how that works out next week. What about you, Pocket? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash pocket or at pocket on Twitter. And I'm going to do the same thing I always do. Whatever comes to mind. Hopefully more Halloween makeup this week because, you know, it's Halloween yeah. week. It's Halloween week. And I might play the new Amnesia, which will give me a heart attack because I, I don't play a lot of scary games and I get very scared. So <laughs> that's what I'll be doing. All right. Well, thanks. Listen, it was fun. There's a lot of, you know, it, it was really easy at first and now it's difficult. And it's, it's, I think it's making it exciting. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so good. It's very entertaining to watch. It's, uh, that's how you play characters. That's how they do. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is, um, on, uh, different times. There is daylight savings this week. So bear that in mind for the shows all week. The, Time difference is usually five hours between the UK time or the EU time and the uh, and the American time. So most of our shows are on at nine UK, which is or Eastern. Mm -hmm. um, but this whole week up until Sunday, the um, UK time will start one hour earlier. So if you're if you're going by the EU time, Lovely. which we do in UK, I hate this every goddamn I know. time. It drives me nuts doing all these shows. And being like, there, well, this one starts then, and then it's an hour difference, and there's already time zones, which is already confusing enough. Um, so bear in mind that if you're in the EU um, this week, uh, everything will be an hour earlier. Essentially, Table Story just runs on Eastern time. So whenever you see the Eastern time, we actually have um, a schedule in the profile. I know, which but it scares update. me. But I think it does it on a. It starts it in a certain amount of hours. You. Oh, it does it? Uh, Locally. No, yeah, there on the schedule tab it'll show you the actual like times in your time zone. That's the best then. So, so come to the Twitch doubt, channel if you're on a VOD or whatever and, and look at it that way. But essentially it will be one hour earlier for all the EU times, um, but it stays on at the same time for the Eastern time. For example, this one was on at eight PM uh UK time and it remained for Eastern. 
and that will be the same thing throughout the week apart from gone which is starts half an hour later so you'll be in time anyway if you show up early um bear that in mind daylight savings for one week it's always a nightmare but you don't want to miss the beginning or miss an hour because of it um and um rhyme of the frost maiden starts this friday oh good on daylight savings week i bet whack yep. is so happy um <laughs> which that, is yeah. uh, a D <laughs> campaign it's the uh, newest module from wizards and um we're starting up a all-star cast show of rhyme and that's friday at 5 eastern 2 p.m pt 9 p.m gmt that is correct mm -hmm. so that's slightly later so write that down if you can my brain is melting it's also going to be on the schedule <laughs> Like don't. It'll be on the schedule. Doubt, go to come our to the tab. come to the thing, or just you yep. can um you can uh go into the Discord and just start screaming at everyone in the appropriate channel, and someone will absolutely help you because Discord community are the best. Right. Speaking of which, Shadow Eight Two and Organic Force Feed. He did some Apple art. Fan art That's section awesome. is the best. I don't think I've seen it. Is there? I haven't seen it about oh, art. Well, I check the fan art tab constantly because I'm a big fan of what you'll do. Of art. Thanks. Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, there's <laughs> there's good. There's there's tons of fan art and stuff. So, um, all right. Hopefully that all made sense. We will see you throughout the week or next week for the continuation. And my brain is melted entirely. You did Bye. it. You destroyed Brad with the <laughs> redeem in the chat. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.